<sighs> Hello, welcome to another episode of High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons with me, your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, here on the Yogscast Twitch, as well as twitch.tv forward slash High Rollers DD. Joining me <laughs> are these five friends behind some of them you may know, some of them you may never have seen or heard before. But we're all but here now to play you've Dungeons seen and Dragons. Us. And now you've seen us. I'm joined by, let me point, let's start here, Kim Richards, Hi. Chris Trott, Katie Morrison. He's hey. missing, but here he is. It's Tom Hazel. And then Rhiannon <laughs> Gower. Let me just try and accurately point as we can. Uh, joining me well done. for this episode of Dungeons & Dragons. Eroes, the Eroes campaign. Uh, welcome, friends. We hope that you are all well. We hope you, that you are all healthy. We hope that you are all safe uh, and enjoying whatever weather is nearby. In, in England, it's very sunny and lovely yeah. today. But we're inside <laughs> rolling virtual dice because Way everyone's better. stuck at oh. home. Well, some, it'd but... be nicer if we were on a table, but hey ho. Uh, let's go over a couple of things before we get started on today's adventure. First things first, I would like to say a big thank you to our sponsor, D and D Beyond. Chris Trot, woo! Here, let me thank them on your behalf, Mark, and everybody's behalf, because without D and D Beyond, what would we be? Just amorphous Nothing. blobs with no intelligence, yeah. just rolling around, sucking up, you know, swords and shit off the floor, but. <laughs> D&D Beyond has very nice generously added there, a quarantine <laughs> resource section to their web website, allowing you oh. to pick up some content for free to play with others online. So you too can be an amorphous blob and pick up their free stuff. I'm literally, that was not scripted at all. One of the features <laughs> is upping the amount of campaigns you can enable with content sharing. So meaning my campaigns or Mark's campaigns or anyone that has the master tier or whatever can have uh, their, a lot of their source books in there. So a lot of the paid for source material can be shared with your mm -hmm. players for free and they've upped the limit of how many campaigns you can share that with up to five now, which is a lot. So thank you for doing that in this current quarantine. Also, so in the spirit of giving, I very generously created an idea for a campaign to inspire all of you. You're welcome. Let me enlighten you by going to my oh, D&D no. Beyond uh, oh, no. section of the okay. site. So here we go. <laughs> oh. This is D&D &D yeah. Beyond. You'll know love. Show your logins. There's quarantine resource right there. <laughs> quarantine resources. Yep. So that's where you can get all the nice content. But let's go in to deep dive my campaigns. I that I think we shouldn't Ooh. see. So we've got Eros, Lightfall, Kastrad. Gideon Pie, what's this? Hmm, Gideon what? Pie. <laughs> what could that possibly be? I wonder. Sounds Zero awful. Players. Have you ever wondered oh, no. what that star being oh, created no. planet is like? So let me steal from the Mark Humes universe. I've taken the uh -huh. utopic world of yep. Gideon Prime and fleshed out what I believe to be the best environment to portray a quintessential slice of life in Gideon Prime, the college <laughs> campus. <laughs> What right. is it like to be a fresh student in this prestigious Gideon Institute of Technology, or GIT for short? Or me, a horny, already going a horny student. Enter my campaign, oh. Gideon Prime, a true Gideon Prime life coming of age romp through the campus of GIT. The part exists of five teen students who make a pact with their deity to ensure they lose their virginity before they graduate. Oh no. Oh, nice. uh, now so we got, see where it's oh, going. It's amazing. We've got Steve <laughs> Stifler here. Who's, you can be assigned to one of the party members if you want. There he is. Um, and I've also Trump. not, what? I, there's one thing I I feel like I need to point out that you've missed it. You've missed a trick on this. What's that? You've said that they're five horny teenagers. Why are they not all tieflings? Well, that's down to the players. <laughs> that, oh, right. no players okay. here yet. There's no active you've got players. An, it says unassigned right there. character. You've got unassigned character. That's right an there. option right there. Steve right, Stickler. Okay, okay. He's actually an ASMR fighter. <laughs> um, right, okay. But anyway, I also made a because you can make your own stuff as well. So let's go to my homebrew oh, no. creations. So oh, I've made go. a Gideon no. pie. Obviously. Oh, wow. <laughs> made an actual just an item. <laughs> made a Gideon pie. Yes. So yeah, Rhiannon, you... stop encouraging this. Uh, you it's can so you can good. add whatever you like. Let's go to the details page. It makes you incapacitate because you are overwhelmed with how beautiful this pie is when you are in its presence. So it does incapacitate <laughs> in you for, presence. for a minute. When you are in the pie. 
Yeah, the smell of this double-crusted <laughs> yeah. pie sends you back to your comfortable, warm childhood. Birds tweeting, the breeze flowing through your hair, the sun reflecting off your full-size wall portrait of your benevolent leader, Lord Starbane. The perfect right. sunny afternoon on Gideon Prime. Notes, incapacitated. It does do that, but it's a really good pie. Right. Yeah. But anyway, I'm just... Maybe you don't like my campaign, all right? I don't know why you wouldn't use my campaign well, idea. But there's five others in the quarantine resource that you can use as an adventure. One of them is actually from Wildmount. The, the famous mm -hmm. Matthew Mercer's uh, campaign setting. The, so the famous. Obviously, don't use those. Use my one, Gideon Prime, College Campus. <laughs> Gideon oh, Pie. Like... Gideon yeah, nice. Pie. Good job, Trot. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, Thank you very brilliant. much. GG. <laughs> GG. It was, uh, I was like, like, is this, like, I was like, Gideon Pie. I, I just so didn't good. get it until you fucking <laughs> read out the description. I was like, oh, now I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You sneak up on me. So you sneak good. up on me, sir. Uh, yeah. Well done. Well done. Well, and well done mm. to you, D and D Beyond. Uh, thank you very much uh, for sponsoring the show. Thank you. They've also just been. Uh, I know Wizards and D and D Beyond are doing a lot of work, giving out loads of support kits to schools and libraries and D and D clubs um, that are running online games at the moment. So good on you. Good for you guys introducing more D and D to the world. So thank you for that. Uh, quick reminder. If you want more Dungeons & Dragons from us, join us on Thursdays at 8 p.m. over on twitch.tv forward slash highrollersdnd. That's our Twitch channel, uh, where you can watch us play Curse of Strahd. We've been playing Curse of Strahd. Mm. We had our third episode. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Things have already happened. Oh, boy. Uh, it is you come kicking and check that out. off. It is kicking off. It's very fun. Uh, we're <laughs> enjoying that sounded. a lot. It is kicking <laughs> off. Oh, uh, it's going crazy. crazy. Uh, you got to be crazy. So you can come and check that out. It's also available as a podcast and on YouTube as well, as well as a VOD on the Twitch. So you can go and catch up there. If you wanted to like catch up on Herolas, but you're worried about like 69 episodes or a hundred and something episodes of Lightfall, this is the perfect po jumping in point. We're only three episodes into Strahd. Come and join us and, and watch our madness there. Also, if you want more streams from us, uh, Rhiannon and Tom do Chaos Twins every Tuesday. 8 p.m. till late, uh, which yes, you can watch including this Tuesday, even though Pokemon. I said that we weren't. It is going to be this go. Tuesday. I think I I've lied. actually got um, your theme music here. Yeah? Here we go. Here we go. I think it is. Yeah. Any minute yeah, now. Yeah, here it is. Oh. That's it. Yeah, yeah. You, you got it. I love you that song. <laughs> you got it in one. Good job. Um, nice. Very good job. Uh, I don't think there's anything else, unless one of my kind cast will remind me. Uh, we've got two no. new emotes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that. That's true. We do have my favourite emote ever made for Curse of Strahd. Uh, yeah, we've got a so Curse of Strahd emote, and we've you... got a Hadar emote as well. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. But who cares about Hadar? It's all about it's all about suck. I know, uh, right? Which is uh, HRD and D <laughs> suck uh, with two C's. Um, yeah. <laughs> Daddy done suck. Which Daddy done suck. Uh, so you can enjoy that. <laughs> nice. Uh, up, and on that delightful episode done? sixty-nine note. Uh, let's play the intro. Nice. Video. Welcome back to Erois. Last time, our party continued their assault against a pack of gnolls being led by Baraz the Awoken, a creature infused with the power of Hadar, the Crimson Star. Whilst Ayla and Sentry fought a desperate battle outside with the bulk of the gnoll warriors, Lucius, Nova and Quill snuck in to the winery and launched a magical ambush on Baraz and his mage companion. Whilst Baraz and the mage were taken down swiftly, though not before inflicting some terrible damage on the spellcasters, 
Once Baraz was defeated, his form began to mutate and convulse with eldritch power, and he transformed into a writhing brute of tentacles and darkness. Finally, once they managed to come together, the party overcame uh, Baraz and won the battle, rescuing one of the nuns who had gone missing from the Vintare Solorense. She revealed that the other missing girl had been taken to a cave by a pair of null mages. Pushed to their limits, our heroes paused to rest and recover some of their strength before setting off to rescue the girl several hours later. On arriving at the Knoll's cave, they discovered an ancient shrine with blood murals and a black stone altar, and only the remains of the nun and the two Knoll mages, along with a thin crack in reality. From within, a voice called out to them. Hello. Hello. What is this? What is this? And that is where we begin this week. Um, so as I described it before, this shrine is quite small. Um, it's partially collapsed and hidden within a series of caves um, that have clearly fallen away to reveal the, the uh, entranceway. The walls are covered in uh, blood paintings that depict creatures with distended jaws, all turned and worshipping a small red dot on a great black background. There are uh, broken stones and what appear to be the remnants of clothes and at best some dust uh, of three creatures that had been here previously, and a single red crack in reality itself, a kind of uh, pulsating seam of magic that has opened up and you can see this kind of undulating red light from within. And we just heard that voice come from it. You you do hear that voice come from it and you all hear it is it, there's an element to where the voice is both telepathic but also you can almost feel the presence in the room, like it has a physicality to it. Um, the inch, the crack itself is maybe only a couple of inches, or maybe like, uh, you know, three, four inches wide. Um, and it's not particularly tall, maybe sort of a foot tall, um, but it is very clear and distinct and glowing in the middle of this, uh, on top of this altar. We just wanted to have a nice little rest before we went on our it. way. And then yep. we get this, Mark. Yep. What the heck? It's almost like destiny has something in store for you all, isn't almost it? Almost like no, no time off ever. I, ever. I'd suck. like to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the worst holiday. Holiday. I want a refund. Can I take my cell phone, <laughs> yep. can can I take my cell phone out? Management, please. Doll up, daddy. <laughs> you guys can keep Sister making jokes to no? stall from dealing with the, the current situation. <laughs> yes, that's right? what I would do. <laughs> yeah, we have just to don't deal with the situation. No. Lucius puts his head yeah. through the tear. Lucius puts his. Okay, you put your head through the tear. <laughs> I'm assuming that was no. a joke. Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, it's my so joke who's up? Hand, Who wants? Yeah, that's the joke hand. Okay. Uh, right, looking Tom, at go. the tear, uh, yes. can I? You said it's like a tear in like spell and magical power and things like that. Is there any way I can look at it and understand either what's creating it or? How to close it. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely can do that. Now, do you want to cast a spell as that, or do you just want to make an arcana check? Do you want to, like, try and, like, Ooh. cast identify or, like, detect magic as well, or is this just a straight uh, arcana check? Like, using your uh, magical knowledge of what you understand of magic. I was just going to do an arcana check for now, because identify is, like, ten minutes, and in, in ten sure. minutes he's going to be in the room. Um... Well, you could <laughs> cast it as an action. You could spend a spell slot, and it just spends a slot to cast it instantaneously. You can ritual cast uh, it and it takes 10 minutes. Oh, I can, can't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, in that case, yeah, let's let's cast Identify. Sure, make an um, Arcana check as well, but make it with advantage. Um, okay, that's 15 and 23. 23, 23. right. Quillic, you are both a servant of the God of Magic. You have, become, you have begun training in the arcane arts as a wizard. You, you have a good understanding of what this thing is and both how to close it and the effects it may have. Um, this is a rift in the planes. This is a rift in magic. Um, it has elements of both time and gravity and the fabric of the planes themselves. 
you believe that this rift is directly connected to a place called the Far Realm, the place that Hadar was sealed. Uh, it does not appear to lead into any other sort of astral space or any other plane of existence. It leads to directly to Hadar's realm, the, the Far Realm. Um, it is possible to close this this rift. This is not on such a galactic. This is not big enough that it. You know, you feel that you and your companions can absolutely seal this. To do so will require expending magical energy to effectively sew it back together by connecting eight ley line points and drawing them together you can seal the rift itself um and prevent anything from either uh, you know any any kind of transference of anything you also don't believe that it's possible that a creature can either come out of it or go through this rift at the size it is but energy likely can go between them um and it's likely that it's it's you can tell that it's drawn in the life energy of the sacrifices and has that's widened it so drawing in life energy uh will make it wider um if you get too close to it it will start drawing life energy from you so if you get within a certain range of this thing it will start to suck away your own life energy uh to, to power itself suck you say um it will suck no um <laughs> You also, I will tell you now, um, with the 23, this is why I had you roll as well. Um, you don't have a feeling that whatever voice just spoke to you can actually see you as individuals. Um, this is probably, it can probably sense you, but it probably can't see you at this point. Um, and then right. finally, once you attempt to start sealing the rift, you either need to, you either need to succeed or this thing is going to turn very unstable and you don't know what will happen. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to communicate all of that. Uh, <laughs> but about the ley lines, can I actually see yes. the eight ley lines? No, they just need to be eight points in space. It doesn't. It doesn't matter for like positional purposes or anything. Like you just know that you're going to need to to anchor the the tethering. The kind of ceiling magic needs to be anchored to eight points of the material realm, and that could just be eight points in space in this room. It doesn't really matter which eight points they are. Um, okay. They just need to be tethered to another plane of existence. It's like um, it's like sewing up a hole in like a pair of trousers or something like that, right? You need to have the individual points to draw the planes together, and then okay. one to kind of seal everything, you know, to kind of bind it all together and stop the tear from getting any larger. Um, cool. uh, yeah. Uh, and as you as you guys are, as you and you saying are you saying this out loud? Like when you're telling everybody like the information that you've Messenger gained. Ring. <laughs> okay, sure. Like it matters. <laughs> you could probably there. read our brains. Hadar. Maybe. Surely we we need to close this quill immediately. Um, who knows what what could happen if we left it like this? What influences it could have on other people nearby? I assume that's Wait, what can, he, can I can offer he hurt us? You? Oh. I don't like it decide. when walls talk to me, guys. Yeah. Guys, 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 the wall's talking. Information. I can provide information. You have a hunger for knowledge. I don't appreciate Knowledge can enlighten. You must learn everything you can before the inevitable before death. Nova, you feel a kind of... There's definitely a connection kind of trying to form between you and this rift at this point. Um, you, if you want more, then you'll probably need to get closer. I'm going to stay where I am, uh, but I'm going to follow okay. up with what do you want? Assistance. Service. And like all things, good service should be rewarded. Clarify. What do you want assistance for? The only thing that matters, matters. The, inevitable. the inevitable look at my 
Mark's smug little face. Look at his smug little face. What there. a little loser. Given his little voice changer <laughs> being all creepy and stuff. Yeah, scaring five people at one time. Look how cool he is. <laughs> <laughs> So you want assistance in bringing about the complete and total destruction of the universe and this planet as part of that. All things All must, things eventually, must die. eventually die. I am in no rush. Seems like you're speeding the process up though, or someone is. There's no response to that. Don't think he likes me. I think we need to be careful with uh, these uh, queries. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we should I do talk not too much. Dislike. I do not dislike. I have no issue. All things are equal in the end. Even you? I am the end. Surely, if all things are equal at the end, that must mean <sighs> everything dies, including you. There's no response. Otherwise, you'd, you'd reign supreme, right? And th that There's can't no be equality. It's just left. Those words echo in the shrine, bouncing around the stone as the rift kind of twists and, un and and pulses um, with their words just ring hollow in the space. What specifically do you want if we were to assist you? <laughs> That's, there's no response. <clears throat> Nova, remember... Uh, mess messenger ring. Stop talking to the wall, stop talking to the wall, stop talking to the wall! <laughs> Messenger ring. But if we know what he wants, we can do the inverse. Come on! This is our perfect opportunity to get knowledge, guys. Come on! Messenger ring. You don't have to ask him, remember. You can ask me. Meta so messenger what ring. He... What's with <laughs> Kim's characters <laughs> being succumbed to major villain creature entities? <laughs> Messenger ring, Kim to Trot. Is, I'm not succumbing. I'm trying to find out more about what they want so we can, like, not. God. Messenger ring. Messenger ring. <laughs> if he just, if he just told, if he told us, it would, it would, it would, that would be it, right? We'd know what to do. So on um, that note. He is not like, going to tell us what He's not going to tell us. No, clearly, because he he's, just a, he's a metaphorical bugger. <laughs> I want what I have stated. The inevitable. The end of all things. The death of everything. The corruption. All that. The fun stuff. Uh, everything we know and inevitable. love. Inevitable. 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 Well, I'd ideally like it to not happen soon. So, let's just close this rift now, shall we? You're more yeah. annoying than Starbane. <laughs> Quill, uh, your eye. Mm, here we go. Mm. Kim, no! <laughs> At the mention of the word, if you say Starbane out loud, there is a kind of reverberation in the room, a kind of uh, shudder. We do not speak that name. And there is a sudden pressure in the room that wasn't really there before. Like a weight on your shoulders and legs dragging you down. Now this is interesting. It has feeling and emotion. Beyond just, I want the inevitable death of blah blah blah. Oh, it hates that. It hates the S word. The person. So that means it could actually be a threat. Messenger ring. <laughs> messenger ring. Yeah. I, I assumed that that was messenger ring. We assume that everything See is messenger I mean? ring unless we say, I talk to the wall. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, Starbane wasn't. Um, yeah, yeah that's, I knew that I mean? that wasn't. Yeah. See, this is this is what I mean. Finding out more so we know how to deal with it. Oh, I wish you guys wouldn't just oh, think I'm yeah. a dumbass all the time. We don't think you're a dumbass. I think you're too clever. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that knowledge can also be we very should destructive. Just be, yeah, we just need to be really careful when walls and rifts in, in space and time open up and talk to us. Because, you know, that's weird. How is Sentry feeling about all this? No more weirder than a she's space like, she's, Yeah, she's, she's fuming inside. She's trying to keep a cool head, but inside she's like, this is like, we need to sort this out. We need to leave. Like, I, I think for Sentry as well, there's this growing kind of sense in the, the Prime Matrix. Like, you can feel the kind of rage and the, the frustrations of, of eons of Guardians, their spirits who probably died fighting this thing. They can tell that you're kind of at least in it somewhat its presence, and they're, they're lending you strength, but also you can feel that rage kind of trickling up in you, like like these little voices you can't quite hear, but you know are there, and they're all just, yeah. you know, yeah, you can just feel this frustration of, of legions of guardians um, who died fighting this thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. We need to close this and we need to leave now. Right. Let's okay. get to it, Quill. Okay. All right. Would you if like to know the details? Of any kind. Well, uh, so the way we're going to do this, because I don't want Ayla to feel left out as well. So, uh, this will be... I don't like normally... I'm not going to fully announce all the details, but this is going to be fine. a kind of skill challenge. I don't mind challenge. sitting back while we close a rift nope. in time. Well, I mean, you'll still get, you'll get to just choose what you want to do. So, uh, the way this is going to work is everyone's going to roll initiative just so that we have a clear order. Um, but okay. it's not going to be like a kind of you know, combat encounter initiative necessarily. Um, it's just that we have a track of who goes when and in what order. Um, so, let me just write these down. So, uh, Nova is 23. <coughs> and then Nat uh, 20, no Lucius less. Lucius is a 16. Oh, yeah. Nat 20. Will is a 7. Sentry is a 14. And Ayla is a 24. Ayla still going first, even without a natural 20. Um, and the way this was worked... Yeah. Uh, the way this works, I'll give you the basics. Quill can kind of... Re you can... Quill is explaining this to you in an in-character way. To seal the rift, you basically need to expend magical energy, which will come in the form of a spell slot. Uh, and then you need to make a check. And that check is just a d20 plus your spell casting modifier so not like an arcana check not like a thingy so for lucius it would be d20 plus his charisma mod for nova it'd be d20 plus charisma mod for quill it would be depending on whether you want to spend a wizard or a cleric spell slot it would be either intelligence or wisdom century i think your spells are charisma as well so it'll be charisma mod for you right cool those are the checks that go on higher spell slots mean greater chance of success you will get a bonus potency. to the check. You will get a bonus to the check equal to the level of the spell slot you spend. So if you spend a fifth level spell slot, you'll get another plus five on top of your ability mod as well, right? Um, to seal it, you need to get eight successful checks of these, and you're going to go in turn from initiative down. Right. If you don't want to spend a spell slot, or if in Ayla's case you can't spend a spell slot, that's not to say that you can't help. You can come if you can think of a creative way that you are helping your allies. You can do that. You can be like, "I'm going to try this. I'm going to try and do this." It's kind of like it's up to you to use creatively any skills you can think of, right? Um, or any kind of be... ability or equipment that you have or anything like that. What do failures do? Do we know? You, I, you will not know until one happens. Um, you can yeah. also spend your turn saying like, okay, Quill, like Tom could say like, I'm not going to spend my turn trying to seal the rift this turn. I'm going to cast Bless. I'm going to cast Guidance on, you know, Nova or whatever, yeah. right? You guys can spend your turns completely normally or as an action, you can try and seal one of the eight points on the rift. Um, right. So does that make sense? Does everyone kind of yeah. understand how that goes? Yeah. Yeah, right. so I'm guessing yeah. we also, this isn't like time sensitive unless we spend like a year doing this you don't know okay <laughs> again or if the dog blows us up on the know. other side you don't know what kind of effects once you start this you don't know like 
are you going to have like a minute to do it are you going to have an hour are you going to have you know 30 seconds you don't know uh you'll find out when you start cool. um, um okay and you can you can delay turns like ayla can just say like yeah i don't know what to do yet so i'm gonna take my turn at the end of the round yeah. or something like that that's can fine. I, I don't mind you doing that. Can I already do that? Because I yeah. can't really, until I know what people are doing, know how to. Assist. Would you like to just happy to basically? Assist, but... Would you like to just default to going at the end of each round, like from now on? Sure. Or do you want to just yeah. for this round? Okay. All right. I'll move you down I'm, in the internet. I'm happy to then. do that. Um, right. And I'll just sort of try and support as and yeah. when I can. Yeah. And this thing is um, it's it's magical in nature. Um you don't know what kind of effects that like any of your equipment or any of your abilities may have you know it's like whilst you are used to punching stuff you don't think you can punch this but there might be other ways that you can affect it you know and if anybody else has any ideas feel free to say like ayla why don't you try doing this ayla why don't you try doing that or century try doing this etc you guys can communicate normally right go on trot can i speak to quill before we kick off yeah absolutely yeah I'm, this is just me explaining how it's going to work when we do it quill your eye, is it worth us use, utilizing it to best how to know how to best proceed with the situation, or knowing the results, or something like that? Knowing what we're up against. I could find out what happens if we don't succeed. Is that is that the best use? Oh, that's very negative, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sure. it would guide whether or not we proceed, wouldn't it? Like. If it's catastrophic, then you can evaluate even better. Yes, and add a lot more pressure to the situation. I can't it wait. It would, but... We need to understand the gravitas of the situation. Alternatively, he's right there. You know it, what I mean? It, his realm is there, like you said. His realm. I don't think we can quash a realm. No. But I can see him. Yeah, don't. Stop looking at him, okay? That's how he gets in. Close your eyes. But I you can't quite see him. I think anything. I described it last... I think I described last turn that you could see, like, a, a figure in it. I'm gonna slightly wreck on that. You can't see... You, all you can see is, like, this undulating red light. That's all you can see in there at this point. But it's a I slight wreck on. It's a slight wreck for me. I mean, it's... The thing is, is it's still connected to Hadar, right? Like, yeah. if you want to try and use your eye to, like, learn something about Hadar, this is definitely a time to do that. Um, this is the closest you can probably be without one of his minions trying to get it. I mean, us. So, what do you want to do, Quill? This is this is on you. You've got to make a decision. Uh, okay, I will use the eye to. Uh, I can find out about the near future, right? So. Yes. I will ask. Remember, you've got to ask a specific we... question. Okay. Um, what will happen to this rift if we? Do not succeed to close it. Okay, so that implies that you would try, it. and that by that question you are implying that you are trying to trying to seal it, and then you fail trying to seal it. Yeah, as opposed to just leaving it as it is. Yes. So okay. the events directly following what we're about yeah. to do, I suppose. So for the first time, so your eye, you the it swirls to grey. You see the mist, and you almost immediately have to cancel this connection you have you have to to dismiss the power of the eye because you are suddenly assaulted by such a myriad of potential futures that you cannot possibly have one single answer from this time around this space is so uncertain and chaotic the eye cannot provide you with an accurate answer shit I guess I still use a charge, right? Because it gave me an answer, just too many. It, it's exactly that, right? It's It gave you too many answers for your brain to be able to comprehend. Um, 14 million answers. Yeah, it's, it's very Dr. One Strange. Yeah. Which one do we win? One. <laughs> just one. <laughs> okay. Um, you also, I would say, uh, the last thing I'll give you on that, because the eye is technically kind of connected to time magic itself, there is an element of time magic. This is temporal magic is infused into this rift and this realm. 
And temporal magic is something that you have never heard of on Eroes before, but somehow you know it exists. Okay. So there's... Is there like a... I guess if I don't know anything about it, I guess there's no potential to ask questions about it, right? Um, I mean, maybe. Somehow you know it, what it's called and you know it exists. You just... You've never heard it, like, mentioned by wizards or scholars. You certainly have never heard any spells of it. it but somehow it's like, yeah, you just know that this is a, a type of magic. Um. Right. Okay. So time isn't right. Time ain't right with this rift. That's what you got um, from your vision. I got everything, but also at the same time nothing. Um. Oh. It could fail in a hundred thousand different ways, uh, but it could succeed in two hundred thousand, maybe. I don't know. Well, we can't leave you. You are, are trying to see something. I can feel it. Glimpsing what is beyond you. Okay, maybe, maybe we don't try and connect with it anymore. <laughs> maybe I don't ask any more questions. Maybe we just close this thing down. Yeah, I'm in agreement. If it can feed on thoughts and dark and spring up from anything, it could even be this that's feeding its power. You know, just aligning yes, with I agree. its thoughts, that sort of thing. It's let's do what Sentry says. Let's close it. Immediately. Okay. Well, if that's what you want to do, Nova, as everyone springs uh, into action, you will have the first is, first choice. How big is the cave we're in? Uh, it's about 20 feet by 25 feet. Um, this this mm. shrine, the cave itself is quite, um, and it's maybe about 20 foot ceiling. It's not particularly big. So Wall of Light would like blindness <laughs> potentially um, yeah get 60 foot and uh wait no yeah 60 foot and then 120 feet of light so let's not do that one shall we i mean when when um, i say expend like you don't need to cast a spell you will spend the spell slot and focus your that energy into a, a, an attempt to seal the rift unless there's something specifically okay. you want to cast a spell well, to no. do it was more I was thinking of using Wall of Light because it has multiple charges as you like. No, um, so that wouldn't work. Out, so no, that, so you basically okay, spend okay. the spell slot. So it's you literally use that just... magic energy that you would have conjured mm. the spell with to create like a, a point to anchor the the rift to. Mm. I'm just kind of wondering. It's, it's, if an it's necrotic... a unique way of using spell slots. Yeah, yeah, I get you now. I'm just wondering if necrotic energy would work, like if I channel it through my dead hand. Um, because Hadar's all about feeding off of life, right? So, I don't know if necrotic energy would I will help. let you, you um, can try whatever you'd like to do. Okay, I will try and channel, I guess, uh, yeah, Nova would try, wouldn't she? She'd experiment. Knowing everything she knows about how Hadar feeds off of life, um, she's going to try and channel her, her magical energy out of her necrotic hand. Um, so, it was a, what is it, D20 plus five, right? No, because if... Uh, well, are you spending a spell slot to do this, or are you just yeah. trying to use the yeah. hand's natural power? Okay, so, but you're going to try and channel it through your undead hand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you're, you smart, you mark off a spell slot, and then you will be Done. making your d20 plus your charisma mod plus the level of the spell. Okay, plus five, so plus ten then. Okay. Damn. Fifth level spell. Mm-hmm. 24. Oh, so... <clears throat> You concentrate and you feel the power go through the metal gauntlet and down the kind of withered skeletal arm that you have now developed since ages five. Um, the energy that comes sparking out, you create almost like a black crackling star of energy in the space around the rift. Um, the energy does seem to be fed upon. The magic itself doesn't seem to have any additional effects because it's necrotic. You don't get the sense that it has any additional effects, but you do create this anchor point, um, and you can sense that it is somehow bound itself to the rift uh, fully now. Um, the, the, 
voice, however, as soon as you begin creating this point, the rift and the room begins to shudder. Uh, what are you doing? Do not do this. Uh, after Nova, Lucius. Uh, I'm going to do a third level spell. So charisma okay. mod plus mm -hmm. three. So 22 plus three and 25. Nice. Yep. Uh, so how's what? What? How are you doing this? How describe how Lucius is using this magic to to do this? I'm trying to think positively. Trying to remember the mm -hmm. life that's around me that's uh, teeming with life. Uh, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of the the very uh, recent events of everyone enjoying themselves at the local town and having some time mm -hmm. off, and the uh, recent uh, pub we were in just sprawling with life, focusing on that energy and pulling mm -hmm. out the most colorful energy from my uh, clothing and attire to fill so it kind with of vibrance. A swirling blue and orange like star probably would kind of form next to the yeah. black crackling one of Nova's. And you yeah. can see that these two points, almost like space is pinching towards them and you can see the top part of the rift kind of being drawn tight and thin as these two points form around it. Um, yeah. The room doesn't shake it's not like an earthquake but you feel like pulses of force just kind of pressing down and you can feel like your shoulders becoming heavy your hair kind of sticks to the top of your head the the ground almost cracks around you as you can feel this immense pressure you should not be doing this little mortals you do not want to make me angry uh, sentry. What would Sentry like to try and do? Um, so I'm gonna cast a level three spell, um, and uh, just like draw on the try power of the Matrix. Try and channel, yeah, try and seal it, drawing on that feeling of like hope within the Matrix, yeah. trying to bring that energy outwards. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully. So D20 Making that work. plus your charisma modifier yep. plus, uh, plus three. three. So D20 plus six. Fuck. Okay. Oof. So <clears throat> the matrix is still so new to you. You try and summon this additional energy. You kind of pull on this anger and the frustration of, of the guardians. And you reach out and magic is still, you can cast it, but it's not something you're practiced and specialized in. And as you try and pull out and you try and copy what Nova and Lucius have done and form this anchor, the anchor breaks away kind of in midair and you see the, the fabric of reality tear slightly more and the whole rift begins to crackle and pulse with power. Can you roll a d6 for me, please, Rihanna? Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll another d6 for me, please. Uh, for podcast listeners, Rihanna rolled a two on her first roll, a one on her second yeah. roll, and a, sec a, a, a two on her third roll. Okay, so I'm just going to mark here two successes, one failure. And, okay, and then you roll that. Okay, so to the rest of you, Sentry seems to wink out of existence. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sentry, what? Sentry, you arrive six seconds into the future it's for you it's like no oh. time passes but to everybody else sentry vanishes for the next turn sentry you can't contribute to the skill challenge as you are effectively okay. thrown forward in the time stream oh god whoa okay <laughs> you are like yanked <laughs> forwards in time by the errant magic of this thing um and you it's Jesus. to you it's like no time has passed but suddenly things are differently so you can't act for the next turn um, okay. So I'm going to make a Crikey. mark that you are you are out of time for the next one. Um, oh, Ayla. Shit. Oh, sorry, Quill. Quill, Quill, Quill. Um, if I put, or if we gathered all of the magical items that we have and put them in the eight spots, could we like focus on them and sort of? gather the magic energy from all of these things is like a magic item web that we've just created. Could we do something like if that? You, wanna, like use them as you, could spend, you could spend your turn basically arranging eight magic items. Um, I don't think you'd be able to do that in just one turn. It could help you. It would certainly give you another source of magic to draw upon. 
there would be a risk that if it, if any complications happen, you might permanently drain those magic items of power. But it would certainly give you more power to draw from, and it would give you an anchor point to focus on. I saw the god, dude. I can't do it. <sighs> I mean, we've got five messenger rings, right? Like, <laughs> they're great. However, we've got five of them. Um, well, you've got to make a decision now. Um, you can you can shout this idea to the rest of the party, and then you could start like gathering up everyone's messenger rings and placing them. I'd say to like put eight things down would probably take you like you'd have to go and like people would need to throw you those items. So it'd probably be like this round, and then next round you could complete it. But you've I'll also just seen Sentry just there. vanish. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's true. I have just seen Sentry vanish. Uh, I'll throw the idea out there, and then I'll. But, you know, just shouting that while I go to the point where Sentry was and try and focus on the point that she was working on. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll do just a regular... Um, so there's a point. I'll you guys are probably a... all sort of, like, surrounded at this point. So you're going to move over to where Sentry was, so we can kind of take Sentry off for now. Yep. Yeah, so I've uh, done a third level spell, uh, so I've got a plus seven. Um... 20. Is that no, 20 total? 23. 23. 23. Total. Okay. Uh, you focus on where Sentry was, and whilst her magic has dissipated, what, is, what kind of, like, what magic are you trying to use, or, like, what? how does this look for Quill? Uh, so just out of his hand, it's a combo of, like, lightning and just yellow, purpley magical energy. Kind of like, mm -hmm. kind of like when he heals. So you haven't seen it okay. before. So you summon this, it kind of forms another kind of like uh, shape in the air and you can see the, the rift is pulled thin at that point, but it doesn't quite have another anchor point yet. Um, and you can see the rift is kind of pulsating and undulating um, as it does so. Uh, Ayla. So I'm not sure how this would work or if it would work. But That's perfect stuff to ask me. Could I... If I was to throw my hammer and use my ability on my hammer to hit mm -hmm. above the rift could I channel the, all the lightning from that if I expend a rage and channel as much lightning into that as possible um, and like recklessly throw the hammer do you think that that magic would yeah I think channeling lightning energy into the rift itself um if Love nothing that. else, it may basically help the, <laughs> the next person to, it may, you know, it would almost act like it would feed on your lightning rather than trying to destabilize their their ceiling attempt. Um, you can definitely try that for sure. Okay, I, I will try that. So make a, just make a strength check. Don't make an attack or like anything like that. Okay. Um, just do Should a strength test for Should I spend a rage? Me. Yeah, spend a rage. Uh, spend wanna, a rage. Like, reckless as much as possible so would that give yeah. me advantage or sure like um, give yourself reckless. advantage but just make this as a pure strength check so d20 plus your strength <gasps> okay uh 15 15 Even with advantage. so <clears throat> you don't gain a success towards the check but what you do is you swing the hammer with all your rage you kind of summon all the lightning in your body as it arcs through your skin down your arms and you let it fly out as the hammer transforms into a lightning bolt the hammer passes through the rift or kind of above it and the lightning arcs in but as the lightning stretches between the hammer and the rift itself you can see the rift is feeding on that lightning energy drawing the magical energy in uh the next person which would technically be nova will have advantage on their ceiling attempt um, as you're basically pulling the rift's disruptive energy away from her spell her, from her own magical energy through the power of the hammer um, however the problem is, is okay. as you try and force the, you try and summon the hammer back to your hand the hammer is currently stuck in the ceiling and won't return to your hand you still have the lightning from your rage in your body but the hammer is like almost like it's being pulled up into the, the ceiling it's like it's falling the wrong way and it won't come back. Gravity. Mm. Right. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay. At the very end of the round, uh, you see that from the rift, uh, a number of tendrils 
come flying uh. out towards everybody who made uh, these are kind of like almost like red lightning sparks or like chains they come flying out to everybody who successfully managed to seal one of the rifts so Quill, Lucius and Ayla uh, sorry not Ayla, Nova so Nova. Nova will do you first uh, this is against your AC so this is a attack against your AC Roll20 is a bit slow at the moment I apologise it's struggling with all the people playing D&D &D. Uh, so that's going to be a 15 to hit you, uh, Nova. Does not hit me. Okay, you managed to throw yourself to the side as this tendril of line, uh, this tendril comes flying out. Uh, Lucius uh, would be next. That's going to be a 12 to hit you, Lucius. Oh, guess what? It hits. Oh! <laughs> you take uh, three necrotic damage, uh, Lucius and you lose a second level spell slot. As this tendril latches mm. onto you, you feel it drawing the magical energy out from you. Okay. Um, cool. And then Quill, uh, that's a 28 oh. to hit. That's a natural 20 wow. is what it is. It's a natural 20. Um, technically it can <laughs> crit, so technically it can crit. So that's nine necrotic damage. Um, uh -huh. And you lose a third level spell okay. slot as it latches on and Ooh. you can feel it drawing the magical energy out of you as this chain is now connected. Um, once it hits you and zaps the energy, the tendrils kind of fly back into the rift and the voice uh, calls out, I can feel you. Uh, elf. elf. Color, magic. Color magic. Inherent strong. Inherent strong. Delicious. <laughs> Servant of a false god. One of her children. Foresight. Give me more. Uh, at the top of the round is Nova. Ugh. Um. <laughs> what, what would using a cantrip do? Like, you have advantage nothing. on spell slot. You have nothing. advantage. A cantrip is not does not have the magical strength to help seal one of these uh, portals. Okay, we're going to do what I did last time and go for a fifth level spell slot. I think you only have fifth levels as a warlock. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> but I've only got yep. two. That's the payoff. Fuck. That um, is the payoff. So You're going to have to support the others. Oh! Wait, oh, wait, hold boy. on, no, I've rolled, I've rolled that it wrong, so ignore that, ignore that. I, I was yeah. like, I was like, Just is ro that the roll same it again. to roll two, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 21, okay. 21 is the highest you got there. Uh, so the first roll Magic. is a 16, and then the second roll is a 28. I'll take okay. that. Right. You feel, as you're summoning another one of these anchor points, the rift almost hits the the magic that you're summoning um and it, it feels just like sentry it's going to rip it apart but then the lightning kind of arcs down from ayla's hammer and connects with the rifts kind of uh tendrils and pulls the tendrils away from your own magic giving you just enough time to form another one of these anchor points and you watch as the rift is pulled thin between yours and quills um and now there are four uh four anchor points in in totality um that have been bound together um, Lucius, you are next. Firstly, I'm going to say, where is Sentry? Where did she go? How did we get her back? And then I'm going to say, Quill! Uh, knowing that um, I just saw that those tendrils almost attacked and made uh, Nova's attempt fail, I'm going to prepare myself, delay my action, to give Quill advantage on his. How are you going to give him advantage? So what I'm going to do is prepare my arcane ability to be willing to sacrifice a level 3 spell slot to focus all my energy to kind of enhance his and put all my energy okay. into that. Okay. You don't need to spend a spell slot um, necessarily, but make a arcana check for me. So rather than spending a spell slot, you're going to try and instead focus your energy and kind of lend it to Quill's aid. Eleven. Um... You don't spend the spell slot, but you don't. You're struggling to create a flow of magic between you and Quill that's going to support his. This isn't how your magic is normally used. It's not like healing magic. Binding it to another person in that way is is kind of unusual for you, and you just don't quite have the concentration to do it as you as you try. Um, but you don't spend the spell slot. While I'm doing that, can I also say? <laughs> 
Sure, you can say stuff, yeah. Maybe the sequester is an option. Just trap it. Stop looking at chat. Oh. Uh, that was, I did look at chat for that. Oh, okay. Unless that was in chat. I'm, I'm case... sure somebody posted it. <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, you struggle to concentrate. You spend like a few seconds trying to concentrate support quill, but unfortunately it has no effect. Um, Sentry, at the end of your turn, this is where you're like, whoosh, and then Sentry reappears to everybody kind of at the end of her initiative, basically, uh, as you come back into the correct the now caught up timeline to where you are. Um, yeah. You don't know what happened to you yet, but the others no. also don't know. So then Quill. Well, I imagine she's just like really confused and like overwhelmed with all this weird, like, she's like, what's happened? Like, yeah. she just feels all this like weird confusion, well, this anger, see, just everything. You can see like Ayla's hammers now in the ceiling with lightning coming off of it. That wasn't there a second ago. And you're pretty sure Ayla was still, wasn't, hadn't moved before you had. And yeah, there's all sorts yeah. of stuff that's happened. Um, Quill. Um, so I, I guess I know that this, this portal isn't an object as such, right? It is not an object. Okay, we can't sequester it away. Um, it is neither an object nor a creature. Sequest- you can, can use the energy, energy. seventh sequester level scroll? spell. You could try. I guess. Uh, but you it's could also certainly worth try. 8,000. Hadar taking over Erois? <laughs> 8,000 gold, potentially. Are you going to be able to spend that? I guess you could buy yourself Look, a fancy coffin. Maybe that's a uh, rich. You know. Sure. What are you doing, Quill? Uh, Scrooge McNuffin. I am going to find another point and this time cast a fourth level spell. Um, so I've got a plus eight. Big boy. Uh, Just before you roll that, Tom. I forgot yes. that uh, Trot used a magical ability to try and support you and failed. Can you roll a d6 for me, Trot? No. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, I mean, it's not a request. <laughs> it's, it's a very rhetorical Two. request. Okay, can you make a deck saving throw for me, please? <laughs> Here it comes. Five. <laughs> oh god okay so <laughs> as you as you were trying to support quill with your magic you kind of concentrated for a moment some of that errant magic interfered uh, kind of flowed into the rift itself and almost like um uh, like a telekinetic force flips you and throws you up it kind of gravity throws you into the ceiling uh you're gonna take some bludgeoning damage uh, you take 11 bludgeoning damage as you kind of slammed into the ceiling and then fall back down um, as you're kind of thrown to the side, um, as your errant magic kind of interferes. That's uh, what I get for people. sacrificing my go to help Quill. Never again. <laughs> it's never again. Right, sorry, Tom. That was my mistake. Uh, I forgot that that was a magical ability that failed. Yeah, fair enough. So, uh, plus four on top of this. So, oh, 15. 15. I need you to roll a d6 for me, please. Shit, okay. 15's a fail, guys. BT dubs. Oh, my God. Two. Who's Same thing, can you make a deck saving throw for me? 16. 16. You just, you kind of seeing what just happened to Lucius mm-hmm. and feeling the same thing. As you try and conjure the magic to create one of these anchor points, the same sort of energy comes flying out, this dark, twisted, almost like a hand or a claw. You throw yourself backwards as it scoops up and all the rocks and stones that you were standing on get flung up into the ceiling and it comes smashing down again, but you manage to kind of leap your way backwards. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, you see that the rift now is pulsing. It's growing wider and then going suddenly thin, and then it suddenly gets really wide, and you can see this red pulsing energy, and then it shrinks back down. It's growing more erratic and more unstable. Um, Sentry, that was... Uh, sorry, that was it. Ayla, your turn. I don't really know what to do to help, to be honest. Um, well, you saw before, I will say, you saw before that these tendrils kind of lashed out to attack them. Um, you could always try and, like, help provide cover. You could try and, like, defend them. Yeah. Stuff like that. I think that's probably my best bet. Can I try and protect Lucius? Yep. So you kind of move I up stand, next to like, Lucius. I like, try and protect Lucius, please. Yeah. So you kind of move up next to Lucius, and you're going to basically give him cover against the next attack as you kind of try and block the tendril as it comes sure. after him. Um, and as you do start moving your way up, you see the same tendrils kind of flying out. This time, though, I think the only one who successfully manages to seal a rift was Nova. Um, 16 plus 8, 24 Nova. 
Yeah, that's gonna hit me just a little bit. It's gonna hit you just seven necrotic damage. Do you have any spell slots left? Nope. So when it hits you, um, you feel it draining, trying to drain any kind of magical energy in you, but because you kind of summon the energy from Tiangong, instead you just feel this kind of crippling pain through your body. You're going to be stunned for the next round, unfortunately, my dude. No. So you are out for the next round. How many have you got? Dude, Three? no. Four. You currently have four, four successes and two right. failures. Right. Um, so Nova, yeah, you're kind of hit by this tendril, like, ah, you kind of let out a yeah. cry of pain. Your back arches as your muscles spasm. Um, as uh, Lucius, it is your turn. You can see the rift beginning to stretch and grow and pulse. Getting redder up in here, right? It is getting very red. There is a dull red glow cast through the entire room. Oh, look at that. Um, so Ooh. Lucius, knowing that he has some form of physical protection from Ayla, will mm -hmm. put a lot of energy into this one. So he's going to sacrifice a level four spell. But he's also okay. going to dip into his font of magic and twin it to try and create two points at once. That's interesting. How many points, how many point sorcery points does it cost to do that? Uh, so if I were to do another level four... Here, well, like no, how much, like, so how much would it cost? If you were casting a fourth level spell slot, how many sorcery Six. points does it cost to twin it? Six. So, okay, I knew it's his fourth level spell slot. Yeah. All right, you can add plus ten for this because that's the spell level and the six sorcery points you just spent yeah i won't be able to do this again at fourth level at least uh, yeah so, so you I get this is and you, then your charisma mod on top so what's that four for your charisma mod i'll do my charisma throw first and then we can add plus 10 on and then top. you add 10 sure it's big roll <laughs> uh, 15 it's a natural one <laughs> for god's total. sakes that is so unfortunate it's unreal um, we suck <laughs> at rolling you, lucius you pour almost all of the energy you have like all of this inherent magic that you have in your body um quill tom i can see you looking there i i mean i can't i can't do anything about Martin, it right? like, shit. it's it's it was a roll of cool. It was a really cool thing. That's that's why I'm gonna let, let you portent it if you want. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, what do you have? Like plus fourteen? I'll use my six on that. You use the six. Mm -hmm. I mean, twenty must be a success, right? Lucius, you summon all of this energy, but now that the rift has grown more stable, the anchor point is just ripped apart. Even with the strength of your magic, the anchor point. Uh, the unstable rift has gotten more chaotic, and even with the the twenty, it just rips the the anchor point apart. Unfortunately, um, even twenty is not enough. It's almost like it got harder I when you it's... got halfway yeah. through. Yep. Mm. Um, so uh, that was Lucius's turn. Quill, you as uh, Sentry. Sorry, I forgot that Sentry is actually up here. Sentry. Um. So did I start my turn? Do I start my turn back here? You get your full turn. Yeah, you get your turn now, basically. Yeah. Like you're you're caught okay. up with the rest of them in the time stream. Awesome. So I'll move. I'll move forward, and then I will cast. Uh... <sighs> Hang on. Let's have a look. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -ba. So three. I'll cast bless at level two, and give everybody an extra d4 on all their checks cool so this nice. will count towards the check as well so yeah everybody gets a d4 cool. on top of any checks they make um while this is in effect three, all right one, two, cool three. yeah that's the right number cool quill uh okay i'm gonna cast a level mega plus ultra spell slot <laughs> plus ultra go for uh, it all, mate. I'll, I'll do a level five all right. Um, so it's five on top of this roll. Uh, 16, Mark. So, yep. You sure? I don't plus know D4. if we can beat this. We don't have oh, high enough modifiers. I mean, even, even if I you D4, do, it, right? you're just like... rolling really bad. I mean, that was a that was a seven for Quill. Uh, so yeah. 16. That's 20 again. Um, Did that include your bless? Wait, no, bless is yeah, so he just rolled. He yeah. just rolled the bless. That was the four to get it for I got, I got best on the bless, but... Best oh, bless. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Uh, I, uh... 
Can I can I funnel like a bonus action spell slot in there? <laughs> no. Oh. I defined the rules. I know. We'll say no. Break them, though. I'm just. I, <laughs> it's more. Do you want to spend your last portent on it? Is what I'm asking. I mean, it's a failure anyway, right? So yeah, I'll turn that into an 18 plus plus four plus four plus. So it's yeah, it's high. <laughs> it's high. Super you high. see that if you don't, you can see two futures ahead of you. There is one where you fail and the rift explodes in unstable magic. The other is where you succeed. You follow the path of the, of the success and you manage to create a fifth anchor point and draw the rift to a, a point, a closing point. Um, so Wait, do so I we see close to an explosion the there? if we failed that one? If you had failed that one check, if you had gotten the fourth failure, the rift would have exploded in chaotic magic. Okay, Don't we've only got one that. chance, one more. You call that I out. have no Halo. spells, Nova's stunned. I. You could help. Do you want? To, what do you want to do? Think of. Is there anything you can think of that you can do to help the team? Does anyone have lightning stuff or anything that they can, that I can help channel my lightning into? Yes, sure, absolutely. Can I, yeah, can I can. try and I'll I'll expend a rage to do it and try yeah. and. Absolutely, give you can. All I've got. Oh, I've got. Make a roll uh, d20 plus Constitution for me. DC 10. With advantage. Just DC 10. Okay. Uh, no. <laughs> Just a plus Constitution. Oh, you get the d4 from Bless as well. So D20 plus con plus D4. Uh, 13 plus yeah. 4 is constitution so without even using the bless. Yeah. Kind of standing next to Lucius, you just grit your teeth, like clench your fists and just channel all the rage and anger you can. And you see Ayla becomes this swirling dynamo of lightning energy that begins pulsing up magic, almost flowing off her skin itself. As she just kind of screams and yells as this mana begins pouring away from her, all this lightning energy. And Lucius, you feel that you can draw that energy out or, or Nova, um, either the two, one, one of the two of you can draw that energy out and use it to enhance your spells and you'll have advantage on the next uh, ceiling attempt. Nice. Um, for you to do. Uh, Nova, you are uh, out of your stun, not so done? it's your turn. I am not stunned. Okay, so quick Oh, question. sorry, at the bottom of the round, uh, at the bottom of the round, there would be a tendril that goes for Quill uh, as he successfully sealed a rift. Can I protect you? 21 to hit it? you, Quill. You can. You are next to Quill. That becomes a 12 to hit you, Quill. Oh, nice. wonderful. Sentry so flies good. in with a shield, bats the tendril away as it flies off to the side. Perfect. Nova. Wonderful. So with Eldritch invocations as a warlock thing, things like... Yes. Gift of the Depths says things like, you uh, once per long rest, you can cast water breathing without expending a s spell slot. Could I, that oh, that's interesting. become Yeah, what magical? level would water breathing normally be? Third. Sure, you can use that if you use that ability you're still summoning magical energy it's just not in a mm -hmm. spell slot um but it's a third yeah. level spell so i'll give you a, i'll treat it as if you're spending a third level spell slot for sure if you expend that ability okay so and i get advantage with ayla if you are channeling ayla's magic her storm magic it kind of makes sense that you kind of summon up water and kind of elemental water and energy to kind of fuel this spell so you have advantage so, yeah. and it's a third level slot plus your um charisma okay. bonus I guess I'll do that then, and I'll summon, yeah, I'll combine with Ayla's uh, lightning to fuel, hopefully, the perfect storm! <laughs> I rolled an 11 and a 24. Uh, plus a d4 for Bless. Oh, plus a d4 for Bless. Does that count for uh, one d4. or both? I count for the, you just roll the d4 and then it adds to the success, basically, the, the plus uh, three, highest number. Plus so 24, plus another three. 26, 27. With Ayla's lightning, you kind of draw it away and you can see storm clouds gathering around. You kind of draw it out and using that internal magic of Tiangong's that allows you to kind of seal yourself in a protective layer of magic um, and breathe underwater. You channel that and form another one of these anchor points, six of them now surrounding the rift, drawing it closed. There is still this thin red line down the middle that you can just feel the power echoing from. Um, no, no. 
This is but one rift of many. Do not think you will accomplish anything. I will remember you. I will come for you. Ah, uh, Lucius. Uh, so has Ayla's enhancement been expended? That's been expended, yes. That advantage is now gone. Right. So I will cast all my energy into a fifth level spell. Uh... That sounds Chromatic wise. Orb of sure. I mean, acid. the spell doesn't matter. It's just the energy, the the slot, the magical energy required to cast the spell. So I'll be using that, uh, and I will mm -hmm. meet the anger of Ayla because I'm pissed that uh, okay. this thing is getting away with what it's done so far, and who knows how far sure. it's already gone. So I'll slam that into the ground. Here we go in it. Um, charisma coming up plus. Uh, what is up with my rolls? <laughs> 13 plus a plus. four. Plus. It doesn't that was matter. Natural. That was a four. He rolled a four. It does not matter. I'll roll it for funsies. Three. Roll it for funsies. So that becomes a total of 16. I guess. I feel fine. I'm not demoralized in the slightest. <laughs> Lucius. <laughs> You, with all that rage and that anger, your hair kind of begins floating around you as the, you build the manor around your body. You throw it out to try and grab this one of these last few points that you need to seal this thing away completely. And as you do, the magic, instead of forming into an anchor point, the tendrils, one of these red tendrils, grabs the magic and pulls it into the rift itself. Um, and as it does, you watch as the six anchor points you've made just pop one by one. <laughs> the rift opens, stretches, closes. You feel like this heavy weight fall upon all of your shoulders. And then the rift just breaks the space around you. The rift vanishes and a rush of magic surrounds everybody. I need all of you to each individually roll a D8. Am I have barrier ringed? Do I have uh, advantage on this because of a dex? There is no, this is not a saving awareness. throw. This is not I, a saving throw. It is just eight, everybody man. roll 1d8. Oh, God. Interesting. I a seven. Interesting. Oh! Uh, okay. Well, we're getting, we're all seeing different results, I think. Yeah. You are. Well, well being, to being an extent. Lucius is seeing the same. To an extent. Right. Certain things are going to happen in a certain order here. Did anybody roll a two? Yes, Katie yes. did. Can you roll a d10 for me, please, Katie? Three. Three. Okay. Uh, Lucius and Quill. I'm going to roll something now. <laughs> What's that? Why d10? <laughs> Why? What's that for? What d8? Uh... What did Nova roll? A seven. seven. That's interesting. No, no, don't say that. And Century rolled the one. The T one. one. <laughs> so. Jeez. So. So. Uh, Ayla, you are hit like these these kind of ribbons of magic come flying off the exploded rift. These coalescence of shimmering patterns and and effects and, and space and uh, fabric of, of reality seems to bend around it. Ayla, you are just washed in one of them. There's, you try and dodge, but it almost like locks onto you and washes over your body. Uh, Lucius and Quill, you, the crushing weight around you becomes so intense you are slammed into the ground. You both take 28 force damage um, as you are slammed into the ground. You can feel your muscles and bones creaking under intense gravitonic pressure. Nova, you are bombarded with this swirling violet magic that kind of bonds to your skin and soaks into your body itself and you seem to kind of almost split into three people then become one again you seem to kind of glimpse the stones around you seems to suddenly dissolve but then come back together time seems to warp and change around you um Ayla, you feel your body kind of not massively change but you can see a few lines of age begin to kind of wear on like your skin not much um but right. your body seems to age in an accelerated manner 
and Sentry is at the middle of all of this. As you're all kind of around it, Sentry is kind of caught in the middle as a maelstrom of energy is surrounding her, and you see astral space kind of open up all around her, and you see all these dozens of strange planets and uh, places that you've never been. What do you guys do as Sentry is caught in the middle of all of this? Um, what can we uh, do? Can I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I'm splitting apart, like. You can still act. You guys can still move and act. Okay. Okay. Uh, even just... even so... um, Lucius and Quill. I'll you've got like a route, like you got like an entry. action and a move. Huh? She's in the middle of you, so she's kind of like. She's like five ten feet. Like. Can, can I move at all? Am I just like you, stuck you're stuck in... there? Unfortunately, Sentry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can. You're like being surrounded by space and places, and you can feel your body kind of being, you know, just locked in in place. I know. What you think. Okay. Do it. Uh, can I? Can I lightning lure Sentry? Oh. <laughs> okay, is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> oh. Right. That's what Quill. That's what Quill's oh. doing. What about everyone else? Uh. Because you're all kind of doing this at is the same she... time. In the is she is like the magic she's within is that mm -hmm. centered on a spot rather than her? No, it's on her. It's on her. It's around her, like a, like an egg around her, like an oh. egg of magic around her that you can all see. Okay, I thought I thought like it was something I could pull her out of, right? Like maybe. Well, it was you did think that. Yes, spot. you you did absolutely think that. Oh. Um. I was calling out. How do we save her? Of it. How do we? Well, I mean, you just you call that out, but then you stay where you are, Lucius. Do you like try and grab her? Do you try and move away? Do you? I you see try Quill kind of like throwing well lightning. At the so Lucius time. also from the same side like pulls a throws out a, l a lure of lightning around Sentry's body. Nova. I was thinking, if I cast Levitate on her, would that make her easier? Would that give the boys advantage? Because you don't it know. Makes her easier to like. You can try. You don't know. I guess yeah. I'll try that then. I'll cast levitate on her to, and hope. So you help reach the boys, out with your, like... you reach out with your innate magic, and you feel this kind of connection between you and Sentry form, Ayla. Can I, literally, just throw her an actual rope, and help yeah. and be but stand where the guys are, like so I can pull in the same direction as them, but lend my strength mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, absolutely. You throw the rope out, out and. As the, the, you kind of all do this kind of simultaneously, kind of shouting to each other as you see Sentry caught there, the rope wraps around her wrist, the lightning lure around a leg, the lightning lure, one of the other lightning lures around her forearm. Uh, Nova, yours is more of a magical connection as you kind of connect the spell to your own innate magic. And at the point that you all connect to Sentry is the moment that all five of you are sucked through space um, and appear somewhere else. Sentry, Ooh. roll a d20. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit, we're in Voxar again. <laughs> this is why we never get our freaking reward money. <laughs> You've got that on you. You picked that up. You got the reward no, we, money we, this yeah, time. Yeah. We got a one. We would have gotten so, more. Okay. I might need some time to figure out some stuff on this one. Oh, um, no. okay. Great. Woo. Literally, Whoa. we have done the worst that we could have possibly done there. I think. Well, if you want, Mark, you did have some. You, you could, had some uh, bad roles. Describe, you could describe the movement, and then we can go on a break if you want. Sure, that sounds really good. Because what happens is, as you are pulled through, there is a similar. Quill and Ayla would feel this a similar sensation to this, but the rest of you, this would be an oh. unusual effect. You feel yourself pulled not just through space but across dimensions across planes as you are all plane shifted um, and you arrive into what appears to be a, a large field of strange flowers and grasses that you have never seen before standing on a large open plane looking in the direction of a beautiful idyllic white city made of curved metal floating spheres of magic and glass um, and you can see you see airships but they don't look like any airships you've ever seen they're sleek metal devices that come and go from this this incredibly huge city ahead of you and 
around its borders, you can see a very familiar emblem, emblem in a black and purple livery, as you see the emblem of the Valkyrian Empire all around uh, on this, this city's base. Um, and yeah, you see a strange city and a strange world that you have never seen before. Mm-hmm. And that's where Shit. we'll take a break. <laughs> oh, no! Let me just we look for my notes Gideon for a specific pie. tab. Yeah. But, we should have just... But, we should, it, it does not look like Gideon Prime. Prime. Oh, it does not okay, look like Gideon idea. Prime. <laughs> it does not look like Gideon Holy Prime. fuck. Um, well, but we followed Sentry. Like, that's the best case scenario out of this. Yeah. Other than pulling her out, I guess. She could have yeah. just gone on her own. Would've... Yeah. Would have been possible. Mm, that that, that, that is very much a possibility, Tom Hazel. Mark, yes, do I have right. my hammer? Because that's the only thing that you I care do about have. Right you do have Thank your you. hammer. I will. I'm not going to be a dick. You do absolutely have your Holy hammer. Holy crap! Uh, it, let's say that in the moment that the uh, the rift broke, the hammer fell to the ground and then snapped back into your hand. Thank you. How about that? Fuck a duck. You pulled uh, it through the portal. Also, as a note, for <laughs> I a- will Ayla not is, leave it's... without it. It's not a huge change. Ayla is three years older than she was. She's aged by three Fab. years. Great. So oh, nothing to affect your stats, aging. but it's only three. What You're fine. To... How old was she before? No, she's an elf. Then... Like, bear. Huh? She's Yeah, that's no, an interesting to thing Nova, to Nova. Then. I'll um I'll add that in the break. Um so while oh, Tom no, reads what? some stuff out. Nova A, B, and C. You have to control three people at once now. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. And they all share Great. intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, holy crap. All right. Uh, let's take a quick break to read some donations and we'll get back to we're not in a row us anymore kid if you do high oh, rollers shit. I'll come back and do yogs uh, yeah. on the bar yeah. okay. cool. sounds good Try, right, check your phone week. Um, okay so donations uh, in previous weeks we have uh, missed a couple because Streamlabs um, hasn't been displaying nearly as many as we'd like um, I think I found the correct place to actually see them all uh, which is not oh, in the good. place you'd think they'd be. Um, so <laughs> really? hopefully we've actually got them all this time. It seems like in the opening of the stream, when we have loads of subs and load of gifted subs and things like that, Streamlabs just crashes and it's just like, well, we'll display we none of them. Um, nice. So I think I found the correct place to actually get them all now. So if I've missed any this time round, then please let me know and we'll get to it. Um, Axius7811, hopefully I uh, pronounced that correctly, was a quarter hundo. Hello, guys. I got into D&D because of you guys and started with this uh, campaign. I was so behind. I'm almost caught up. Uh, you guys are amazing. Katie, you're pretty. Uh, she'll hear this later. Quill, you're a leader. Kim, you are smart. Sentry, my fave with Quill, are loyally a loyal. Uh, Lucius, fun. Sorry, it's long. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> um, Here's a little uh, here's a little side effect of reading it from this reader. It formats them real weirdly. It's weird. <laughs> so it's harder to read out. <laughs> uh, Matt C wanted to say I've had tons of fun this past week, uh, and I'm happy. Hang on, I'm going to have to spread this out because it is impossible to read on here. Um, Want to say I've had tons of fun in the past week, and I'm so happy people have enjoyed Heroes of Arois. Yes, Matt C has made. Um, six now one for every character and then one overarching heroes of Aroes uh fan music thing so go check them out i think we've been retweeting them on the main channel uh, main twitter channel anyway so listen to those i'm going to be taking a much needed break from music but i'll be back soon thanks uh much so much to you guys in the community for this epic adventure thank you very much ghosty pants with a quarter hundo yay hi rollers time to sit back and relax with howard's bathtub gym tm um the norwegian guy or that norwegian guy I'm trying to figure out why some donations are not showing up. Please read the code beneath carefully so I know what happens. Debug to B. I feel like I feel like I was meant to read that differently and it was meant to be something horrendous. <laughs> but hmm. well done. I might have I might have gotten around to it. Uh that Norwegian guy again, I'm trying to figure out why donations are not showing up. Debug one A. Okay. <laughs> Natalie Hawthorne. Uh, the cult of Starbane is now recruiting. Have you ever wanted to worship Star Emperor Valkyrian? But he keeps saying, please don't do that. Here at the cult of Starbane, we do it anyway. Contact High Priestess Natalie for details. Praxis Val! <laughs> um, nice. J. Lee, 5397, with a hundo! Whoa! Um, I've watched since episode one of Lightfall. 
here is a small token of my gratitude for some amazing entertainment throughout the years and helping me uh, get into D&D. Now, do us all a favor and stop Hadar from destroying reality. Well, well, well. Uh, Emery Torven. Hey, Rollers. Finally able to catch some Aroas live and felt like as a fan since its start. Oh, since... As a fan, since its start, I wanted to donate and say hi. Quick question, mostly for Mark. In the future, if one wanted to novelize this Aroas campaign, what would one do? Well, you can write it as a piece of fan fiction, obviously, but we don't... Obviously, we'd like you not to publish it because it's not your IP. IP, um, If people yeah. just want to write a novelization for their own fun and not release it, that's fine. You can do that. Um, but, yeah, like... If any, yeah, that that's where it lies, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, not um, much more I can really world, add. World and character owned by High Rollers D and D. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, some, we've seen some fan fiction anyway. I've I've read some very yeah, good. Like fan fiction's fine. Like, yeah, it's like it's great, Hello. and I welcome people <laughs> doing it. Like if and, and the difference as well is like I'd rather people wrote their own original stories rather than just yeah. writing what happens in the campaign because people would just watch the campaign i i'm i think that that's more interesting people doing their own fun fan fiction stories in it you know ah! uh, okay Ooh, frank the npc holy shit hadar has come episode prediction hadar through the rift absorbs the prime matrix leading to the end of our friend century nova makes a dark pact with hadar ayla and lucius must choose who to save quill or nova oh those wacky yeah. sloths honestly not super far away um well so you guys would saving me <laughs> and that would be fair yeah. there was there's three of you now though it's fine we've got backups yeah. save the good one <laughs> ghost of sprinkles what the fuck is going on mark you absolute fucking evil hadar is here ah! sorry i've screamed on i've screamed enough love you guys and heck you mark for being an evil dm i love that it opened up with two fucks and then ended with heck you mark <laughs> Thank you. Um, Ren Harrell. Hi, Rollers, episode 69. The squad argues with Prisoner Zero. Is that like an Always Sunny reference? Be... Um, no, there's a really old TV show. I know what it is, and I can't remember the name of the TV show. Carry on. The Prisoner. I will do Juan mm. more, and then we'll go to the Yorks donations. Phoenix Willow, Phoenix Wylow? There's a Y in there. Uh, holy crap on a cracker. Mark, you're killing me. The mechanics around the rift are insane. My inner nerd is loving it. My inner strategist is loving it. Even McDonald's is thinking of changing their slogan to <laughs> we're loving it. <laughs> it's um, just a, it's a kind of, uh, fourth edition had these things called skill challenges and it's just kind of a basis of those. Um... Doctor Who. I'm, I'm desperately trying to... Uh... <laughs> think of some stuff is that all the high rollers once there's a few more like... but i didn't know how long we want to go for or how much time mark needed well there's a few on here read out, is... read out the yogs ones okay yeah. sounds like he needs more time <laughs> no i can thank i you. can work with what i've got but we should read out the yogs ones as well thank you to olo renve for your donation thank you to nightjar for saying nice cheers <laughs> thank you nice. for nightjar again saying not nice not nice nope <laughs> Straight after that. Uh, no, one yeah. lightning wing dragon donated question wouldn't have been wouldn't it have been just easy to contact starbane and have him deal with the hard H hadar shit just like ring him up and have him deal with the baddies uh Kim enemy of my enemy is that. my frenemy also nova is now like tracer from overwatch cheers love <laughs> cheers love <laughs> maybe uh, uh kim check your check your equipment on your inventory sheet oh god okay Raging Rhino 10101 donated. Well, fuck. Also, would like to mention the worry you might have been moved through time as well as space. Ah! <laughs> what is what's oh, this? Sentry. Ah, yes. <laughs> Perfect. What? Summing up how go. everyone feels right now. Excellent. A whole page of it. <laughs> Accurate. Amazing. Um. And then the last one here, that Norwegian guy donating. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why some donations are not showing up. Please read the code beneath carefully so I know what happens. Yeah. We had that one twice on ours I, as I well. Get, um, yeah, I debug get 5e. Uh, you know? Do you want some more time, Mark? I can keep going if you want. What the heck? No, I reckon I can, I reckon I'm okay now. Right. Off 
we go. Hi, Kim. Lol. Okay, so... Kim. Okay. okay. You... you yeah, Ooh. you fucking... You got fucking lucky, let me tell you something. <laughs> I am now a servant of Hadar. Yeah, that's it. Oh, what's new? <laughs> what's I am new, the secret eh? Cylon. Secret Cylon. Okay. Marshall okay. Uh, I'm just checking one quick thing. Yeah. Those should show yeah. up in your spells now, Kim, as well. Okay. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. Um, okay. Cool. Cool. Right. Okay, then. All right. So those notes can go out the window, uh, and then I'll focus <laughs> oh, on no. these notes. Um, okay, so we come back in as the all of you arrive in a sudden kind of eruption of magic uh, into this strange alien world. Um, plants that you don't recognize, uh, green fields that seem to just stretch on for miles and miles and miles. Um, a gentle, soft breeze. The air is pleasant, temperate. Um, it is quite a peaceful location, except for the humming sound of these large airships uh, that occasionally pass overhead and seem to descend down towards this beautiful white city of curved metal and glass um, that stretches out before you. You can see that there are various smaller homes dotted around it, there are some of the parts of the city actually float up in the sky. Um, one particular building appears to, not really a building, but almost like an enormous floating dock uh, that you would have for sailing ships hovers just above the city and a little bit further out. And all of these metal airships come and go from there, basically. Um, it's, it's a few miles away from where you currently are. You'll have to trek there on foot, um, but you can see the the faint markings of these Valkyrian Empire banners um, being flown outside. Where the hell Does are it we? Look. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, me and Ayla have, Ayla have felt this before, that kind of travel before. Travel. Wherever we are, it's far away. No, we're not nowhere. It's, it's a nightmare. This is just a nightmare. Like, we're just dreaming. No, this Sentry, this... Sentry, Sentry. It's okay. We're all together. It's fine. No, we're having Except a nightmare together, right? We're just this isn't in real. a different place. Yes, it's a joint nightmare that is my life. Welcome. <laughs> Enjoy. We are together. We are together. This could have gone much worse. We all managed to catch Sentry before she was pulled on her own. I'm imagining that is what could have happened. We no, are together. Hey, we're. We're not inside Hadar, so that's fine. Uh, my question is, does this look anything like the pictures we saw in Rose Hall? No, no, it looks different. Um, similar, like, not similar looking plants, but just as alien, but not the same ones you saw. Hmm. No. Uh, so, so, how do we wake up? I still believe it's a dream. I don't, I don't want to believe this. Can I you want me to slap Lucius? <sighs> okay, yeah. pinch you pinch him. him, you slap him. No, no wake ups. Uh, why us? Does that mean the rift is still open? We failed? The rift Either was it's... definitely not open. The rift bl exploded in reality breaking magic when you tried to bind it with the last one. So you did destroy the rift. Um, it, was no, it will no longer be open. However, the consequences are you are all affected by different realities of magic. Some of you more better off than others. Can we, can we contact Raya? What do we do? Okay. Like, there's, message, there's still... See if you can message Quill. Uh, we're, I don't think we're on Eroes anymore. No. What? what? We're what not on Eroes anymore. That's impossible. Uh, uh, no, I... The Look at this. Will this protect isn't... us. We can't. Surely. Yeah, but like Quill outside. said, not, Quill not and I have no. been. We've been outside the cradle before. We've, and ages we don't know what happened five. then. But it wasn't that ages five. We, we went to a different plane and 
there was a giant spider once that was that was just me and quill it was very bizarre i didn't like it this this felt like that it felt like that thing that, how can we test would you agree? and find out Am for I right? sure um Ugh. look around not a ruins. Weird. I mean, have you ever seen a city emblazoned with with Starbane's sigil? It, like, that's not a rose. I apologize. I'm being very, very ir- irritable right now because um, this is this is crap. We try and save the world, we get booed off the world. What is this about? It's just, it's just bullshit. I think if anything, it just shows there are more worlds out there than our own, and. It's not. It just. I know we knew this, but it's not limited to Erois. There are other worlds. There is more life out there, and this, this shows the extent. Well, I guess of Starbane and and his empire. I don't think this is meant to be some sort of message to us. This is just. No, it's not. It's not. But I'm. I'm just saying that. Our home is no longer where we are, and we were there to try and protect it and we were thrown away from it so how do we protect it now and how do we get home how do i help the guardians if they're, so they're all gonna die if i'm not home everybody everybody calm down calm down i've just been thinking about this remember when we were at rose hall and we saw paintings of an alien landscape and and the ghost there she mentioned being visited by by someone who looked similar to Lucius. I don't think this is that world, but but she mentioned that there are archways, that there are gates that allowed this person to visit her in Rose Hall. So maybe somewhere on this planet, if, if she was able to be visited from an alien planet that was similar to this, the, 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 the flora here looks similar. It doesn't look the same, but it looks similar. Maybe there is an archway, or maybe we can use the starships. You know, if this is part of the Valkyrian Empire, there might be a starship, a way to get home. Think about it, Starbane... If this is part of the Valkyrian Empire, they would use teleportation circles, and we do know a way to one place at least, and that's to Vala. Oh, Quill. (laughs) I don't like that. As you guys are having this discussion, you begin to hear a faint kind of humming. Like a kind of uh, distant but growing ever closer loud hum. I wonder if this is part of Starbane's empire. I wonder if it's worth us pretending we are allies of Starbane. Look, I know you're going to yell at me, but Got we are on a Starbane on planet. In we terms are on of a Starbane yelling... planet. Can we just, sorry, just to, um, just to interrupt that humming noise, can we, like, maybe some hide, hide? Yeah. Also, I'm Aracocra. Can we hide? I'm a Is there somewhere to hide? <laughs> um, you are Where currently in a very world? large, open, grassy plain. There's some hills, um, but there's no, like, rocks or buildings or anything really substantial, like, no forests to hide in. Um, and as you are looking around, um, you very, you can see what I best would describe to you guys as a kind of floating chariot, but there are no horses, there are no um, animals pulling it, it just seems to be moving on its own through magic um, as it is making its way towards you. There appears to be an armored, two armored figures on it, um, and they are kind of coming in your direction. Um, uh, I'm going to lie flat. <laughs> okay. Lucius lies down on the grass. It feels very nice, Lucius. It, it's there's this very strong, heady floral scent, um, and the grass. There's an element here which is kind of similar to the lowlands of Aroes. It has that same earthy smell, um, but it's warm. It, it's quite nice. It feels quite soft and, and cushions against you, against you. Um, and yeah, the rest of you see this chariot getting closer and closer. It's obviously moving extremely fast. Um, somebody upon it seems to be waving at you in your direction, kind of. Well, they've seen Just us, so... Remember Everyone what hide, quickly! Me. Get down! There's no it's hiding, it's seen us, and it's not aggressive. Yeah, um, it probably will be, but... What can we do? What can we say? 
We're clearly not Practice from around well. here. Look at us. Look we at us. We can start by waving back. <laughs> do you do that, Quill? No. Yeah. <laughs> Quill, one little wing, waves. Um, yeah, it's uh, the person sort of like sees Quill wave. He stops waving. And this metal chariot, which is this sleek, polished silver chariot with large gemstones on the bottom of it, which seem to propel it off the ground, uh, pulls up. Inside are two figures, both armored, uh, wearing a kind of sleek gray metal plate. Um, on it, they have one of them has a giant pair of feathered wings coming out of the back of their armor. Uh, they have pale blue skin with white hair that seems to flow and curl around them very beautifully and unnaturally. Uh, the other one appears to be, uh, they wear a full helmet. They're quite large, um, kind of hulking almost. Um, and you can see that both of them have the Valkyrian Empire symbol on the armor. Um, but they kind of pause and look over, and the one with the blue skin uh, calls out, it's like, Oh there! We had, uh, we had some reports of some transportation magic. Are you citizens okay? Are you alright? Where have you come from? Can they oh, see us? we're a bit confused. Sir, yes, we can, we can see you. You... There's no need to hide on the ground, sir. It's, you're quite safe. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Let me get up. Kind of looks at you curiously. The larger one just folds its arms and sort of looms and looks down on you all. Uh, sorry, we're a bit uh, geographically confused. Um, wh What city is this? S what city is this? It's the Principality of Ishtar. Have you come from have you come from Ironia or Bellerin? Armoria? Are you off world? <laughs> Are you off worlders? Was this was there a malfunction in your teleportation magic? Yes, we're off worlders. Yeah, I he kind of nods and smiles. He's like, I Ganassi, I know that you're an off worlder. It was something of a rhetorical question. I didn't know if you were based here. I I mean some of you I don't recognize, so you're certainly not from here on Elysium. Um Oh, it's Elysium. Yes, yes, that's the name of this planet. Are you from somewhere, I think, uh, perhaps somewhere not as educated uh, as he looks at Lucius when you say that? Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, Sorry, I think everyone's just a bit d discombobulated. It, it, it went wrong, very wrong. Travel makes I... us feel a bit pukey. Feel a bit mm. pukey. Ah, you're not used to, <laughs> you're not used to, to uh, playing our travel understandable it's not very well, nice. uh, there's i mean it's it's not really dangerous but we prefer citizens not to just be out here on the plains i we can give you a lift into the city um and and help you get your feet sorted if if that is necessary that'd be lovely yes, please thank you yes yes of course of course um yes come on come on come on board and we'll get you some water uh, do you drink water some of you uh i'm not oh. sure if all offworlders can you process? Is... Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Do you have well, any plates? Point to century. Yeah. <laughs> Pla plates. Yes, of course we have plates. This is a very advanced. You have, this you is have a, very a facility. Advanced golem. A facility to warm the plate. Yes. Warm it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, my dear. Yes, plate, we 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 have we have fire and and warmth and and everything else. Yes, we have all Excellent. of that here on Elysium. You'll be Thank safe. You. Don't worry. You're safe Can here. Can I have ten of, of those? He like the, the he, warm he seems her. so bamboozled by Sentry, and you can see him looking like your uh, your golem is making a request. Is, it, is this your golem? Oh, oh yes. yes. Uh, she's as yeah. uh, well. I would say human <laughs> as I don't want, it's like the brace. <laughs> This is this uh, is fascinating. Yes, our uneducated I've never met came such an advanced that. construct. <laughs> oh, but you don't. But you don't know Elysium. He looks at you, Lucius. Like, but you've never heard of Elysium before. I don't know every street in my own city, let alone other planets. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. Understandable. Uh, the large one who's been silent this whole time. You hear this kind of deep rumbling. <clears throat> Come on, hurry! And this pu this plume of like 
fire and smoke kind of erupts from under the helmet and rises up. Yes, all right. Keep your infernal britches in your armor. Come on, then. <sighs> Worst partner I ever could have been partnered with. Um, come on, let's get you back into the city, then. I'm Hadriel. Okay. And he kind of offers a hand. Offers a Hadriel. <laughs> pleasure to meet you. Lucius Virian Elowin Elanaster. Oh, a pleasure to meet you, Master Elanaster. Um, let's get you into the city, and then, if you don't mind, we might just have to do some, just some routine questions. Um, just get some information from you. We'll need to have your weapons scanned, that sort of thing. Um, just because unlicensed planar travel, we need to make sure that you're all documented. We don't want any trouble with the authorities from, from this point onwards, right? Of course. Of, of course. Ayla just, is like, that... grips her hammer quite tightly, like, mm. Mm -hmm. Is Is that the sigil of Ishtar? I'm pointing at the Starbane one. You point at it. Interesting. Make an insight check for me. Sure. Mm -hmm. Unlicensed uh, planar travel. Hmm. There 13. is there is a flicker. You don't quite. I think with a thirteen, when you point at it, you can't mistake that as this as Hadriel looks at it, there's this kind of discomfort when he sees the symbol and that question that you ask, he's like, no, no, my good man, that is not the symbol of Ishtar. That is of the Valkyrian Empire, the new custodians of Elysium. Did we find the one good egg on the planet? Are you asking that in character? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Ayla wouldn't use the term good egg for a, no. for a random Our... stranger. This is in character. Uh, no. The glorious Emperor Valkyrian is providing security and safety to all the citizens of Elysium, and so we are obviously dedicated to his cause. Go, Emperor. Indeed. The large figure is just like, <clears throat> Hail, Callus. Love, Hail. love it. I just want to yep. recoil a little bit when he says that. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, and I think, like, there's... It's, I'm not going to make you have guys make insight checks to see that Hadriel does not repeat what was just said. He mm. just kind of is like, right, well, better better get a crack on then. Let's get you back to the city um, and kind of leads you into the back of this elongated chariot. It's quite like slender and thin, but it stretches out quite long. Uh, the two of them sit up front. The larger figure grips these crystalline kind of grips um, and the whole thing lurches to life up into the air, turns around, and it begins making its way back towards this large, beautiful metal city. Um, wow. Overhead, you see all sorts of, like, vehicles and, and ships passing and going. And as you draw closer, you begin to see the what appear to be farms. Um, very kind of loose communes, but you don't see any people working on the farms. You see things more... They're not like Sentry, but they are clearly like metal people like but much more simplified they look like clockwork soldiers almost these kind of very thin bodied clockwork individuals that appear to be doing the farming along with larger machines um and you are you kind of go sailing past um towards what appears to be a wall of half translucent light that acts as a gate into the city itself cool. lucius you had a question yeah can i use the messenger ring and say yes so hedriel um have you been in the... What's your job? It's an interesting question. That's a very interesting thing. Let me check something for you there, Chris Trot. <laughs> I like Tom's changing his background. I just want you to know I appreciate yeah. it. I need to be in the right... <laughs> you know, the lights around me have to be correct. Is it bluey? Oh, that's it? very interesting. I forgot, I forgot that they could do that. Um, oh. You... Oh, interesting. No, I think that no, he you he doesn't reply. Um, he does not reply to you. Well, our um, messenger rings are safe, everybody. Good, good to know. <laughs> oh, Hadriel, um, no lucky star bane, other infernal, very intimidating person, very much star bane. So, seems like things are a bit uh, at a tension, maybe, a lot of tension. Newly overthrown leader, etc., etc. It's the last place we need to be if we want to make a fuss about yes. anything. 
guess we fall into line and get what we need. Not, not the last place. Exactly. Gideon Prime would be the last place. Well, true. <laughs> mm. And that was a result on the table. To... Yeah. Let's just get home, okay? Everybody is focus on the task, not make a meal out of this. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so you guys have that conversation. Um, you pass through this wall of light. There is a flash of red, um, and you can see that several other figures, all of these strange races, some of them appear to be humanoid in shape and size. Um, some of them appear to be elven. Um, they have elongated ears, longer than Ayla's ears. These these elves' ears go quite far out, um, and their hair is a very bright blues and greens. Um but they all look around and you can see several of them reaching for force rifles, similar to what you've seen Valkyrians, uh, the Valkyrian Empire's forces use before. But Hadriel holds a hand up. He's like, easy, easy, they're with us. Um, we need to get them documented. Uh, and you just see a few of them nod and go back to their posts. Um, uh, Hadriel probably makes a line like something like, like uh, always always a bit jittery when the, when the alarm sensors go off. Uh, never know when, uh, well, we never know when the stars, uh, the star might launch an attack on us. That'd have interesting. Uh, the, yes, Mr. Elanasto. If we were, for some sort of reason, criminals, and we kind of involuntarily, well, we just ended up here, right? Plane shifted with the intent of really hurting place. Like, why, why are only two of you defending five of us? Well, I mean, <laughs> he kind of smirks. This all hypothetical obviously master elonesto of course I, the fact I is mean, is the fact is is that we are not the only ones defending you i mean we have dozens of patrols for the uh the ishtar militia here uh we were just the ones on scouting duty for that day we were monitoring the channels so we just happened to see it and he looks at you he's like no i please i mean this by no offense you and your companions are certainly no match for me and my partner this he is not in his true form I feel safer already, thank you. You are quite safe here, I assure you. Um, the the Crimson Star's forces will never reach Elysium. You are safe here. As long as you're not enemies of the Empire. Oh, and he kind of looks no. at you knowingly, like... Enemies Lol. of the Crimson <laughs> Tide, absolutely. Hey, messenger ring real quick. <laughs> hey. hey, do you remember when um, Maximilian looked us up on that um, thing? On his wrist. The bleep bloop. <gasps> oh. He, uh, if, uh, if their records are as up to date as Maximilian's being part of the Empire. Ooh, this isn't good. We need to Depends get Depends how high level that knowledge is. It does, doesn't it? Uh, the the chariot <laughs> is pulled into a... And as you enter the city, the first thing to note is across all the sites of Erois, you have never seen a more pristine, clean, beautiful city as this. The walkways are framed by beautiful gardens. The people are dressed in exquisite robes and cloth. Uh, magic is everywhere. Magic lights, um, magic uh, vehicles that transport people around. There seems to be some sort of large... The best way to describe it to your characters would be like a, it, out of character it's like a monorail like a kind of like crystalline monorail but to your characters it would appear like nothing you've seen before like a series of of carriages that move on a, a single track faster than you've ever seen um the people here are well dressed but you see the same armor this gray it's not like the valkyrian armor of the remnant you've seen before this is like a dull gray it's sleeker some of them wear capes with it some of them have wings that protrude from the back some of them have uh, sections for tails to come out um, but it's this dark kind of like dull gray armor with the Valkyrian Empire symbol on it um, and they are everywhere you can see these patrols kind of walking around they nod at citizens they seem to inspect they seem to inspect things like vehicles and shops as they go um, and yeah, it, it's it's incredibly beautiful. Everything is made from a sleek metal or glass. Um, there is very little stone or wood here that you can see. Um, and yeah, there's just magic uh, all over the place. But the chariot is pulled into a small side building that connects to a perhaps six-story glass and steel tower, upon which you can see a pair of angel wings uh, surrounding an eye 
um, but hanging below that appears to be the banners of the Valkyrian Empire. Um, you are basically unloaded. Uh, Hadriel kind of gestures for you to follow him. Um, the large, the larger fiendish agent uh, coming up the rear um, as you are led, unless you wish to resist or run away, um, into a large, very sleek lounge, I guess would be the best way to describe it. I'm scared. I'm scared that they're going to know who we are and we're going to be imprisoned for the rest of time in this city. Um, Adriel, do you know how long this will take? We're eager to get back. I, we actually, do you know how we could get back? He kind of looks at you. Uh, well, I mean, we have a we have a functioning starport here. Um, there are various magicians that can that can provide uh, teleportation spells uh, or plane spells, uh, gateway spells, gateway. There, we have an active gateway here as well, um, all of which are, are usable by citizens. Uh, there are sometimes costs attached to these things. So that they don't tend to just work for free. Uh, ultimately, taxes have to be paid and uh, levies have to be paid to the empire. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm sure that you'll be able to find a way. I mean, there's also there's often many entrepreneurial captains out there who are looking to transport uh, passengers to, to, to the other worlds. Um, yes, I'm sure we can do that. In terms of how long this will take, well, that depends on your backgrounds. I'm sure if you are the upstanding citizens, I believe you to be, there should not be any issues. Uh, and he stops and looks at d looks at you dead in the eyes, Quill. You're not troublemakers, are you? No, no, I just... We wanted to make sure we weren't trapped here. Is it you there asking is a, us the question? You see his eyes, something glimmers across his eyes as you speak that to him, and he looks at you. Well, no need to worry then. <laughs> oh, we're so fucked. Uh, he turns, uh, he looks at the infernal creature, and you can see there's this this bubbling tension between them. Um, he looks up and he just says, Barkel, come on, go and take a break. I can take these five. And he looks. Mm. Got stuff to do anyway, Angel. And he just stomps off. Uh, shoves like a small another humanoid out of his way as he makes his way uh, <laughs> down down a corridor. Yes, go on. You can converse as you wish. I think the boys have something she. We have our chance. Hadriel, there's something about him who doesn't like Starbane. On his own, between now and when we get to wherever we're having our checks, we need to convince him. To side with us somehow. Let us go. If he doesn't agree with Starbane and he sees that we're enemy number one or six or maybe 25 of Starbane's radar, then <laughs> hopefully we can get him on side. Can we use magic? Anyone got magic? Persuade him. This way, please. He kind of gestures you towards a large room where you can see several uh, chairs and a table. Right away. Here we go. Uh... <clears throat> Quill, Quill, <laughs> whatever, anyone? <laughs> I don't think I should say anything because I cannot. I, Go I can't your function. Steps. Um. He gestures you inside. Out, out of curiosity, um, had Hadriel. Um, what, what, what's the kind of range of these um, uh, starports and gateways and things? What, what kind of what other planets are available oh. to depends to? depends on the distance uh, i mean it depends on it depends on the ship quite honestly ganassi uh depends on the range uh, some ships can't really manage more than a few uh sectors of of uh, you know they can't some ships can't enter into the in, uh, the infinite staircase some can't travel via the the sticks hyperspace lanes um it depends really uh, the gateways can generally travel to any other world with an active gateway so but they tend to be the most expensive a lot of uh, cargo haulers and merchants tend to use them um and then teleportation magic equally them. expensive just alphabetically you know just a few names off the top the of your planets head planets aren't really coordinated by alphabet i mean if you want to go to another if you need to go back to and i don't know where you're from if you need to travel to another large city gideon prime is accessible we can also travel to uh we have access to the four <laughs> elemental planets, uh, Brass City, Dal7, um, uh, 
Frost, Fell, Marid, uh, all of those. Uh, uh, you could also visit Asgarat if you really want to. Um, I would hope that you would not. Uh, same with Gehenna or Avernus. Um, Landor, uh, Lun Lunarius. You can access most planets from here. Arcadia. Some of Jasper? the more outer planets. Uh, Jasavir, uh, you may need to head to Gideon Prime. That's a little bit far out, unfortunately, for Elysium. Um, uh, anyway, and he gestures Gideon you to Prime, enter the room. <laughs> Another one. Done Jasavir. Uh, I noticed, uh, Hadriel, that... Um... If you don't mind, sir, please, I'll answer more questions once we begin this process. It's I don't want to... I... Your friend here has said that you're busy. I don't want to take up more of your time. Yeah. Just super quick, can I see if the yep. thing, the reader on his eyes, if, if it's magical? It's not a reader. It Imagine. wasn't a reader. It was his it's eyes. Him. Like, his eyes, literally, oh. there was like a pulse of glow of golden energy over his irises he's, as he was talking He's to an him. angel. He's an angel. He does appear to be very angelic. He he's does. an angle. He got those powers. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, and he just, okay. he does not say anything more. He's just kind of like pointing at the doorway into the room and is not moving. Okay, I guess. Let's go. Okay. And when you step inside this room, there is the unmistakable <laughs> effect that you are in a zone of anti-magic. Sentry, okay. your thoughts become somewhat sluggish. Um, as you're in, you, you can still function, but the anti-magic is kind of limiting any more sufficient powers. Like you can think and speak and everything's normal, but it's like, it's like being a little bit drunk. Like you can feel like your cognitive behavior a little bit off, off kilter. Um, everybody else, anything magic you have, any spells, the messenger rings, none of it functions inside this room. Shit, not the magic rings, um, the messenger rings. Uh oh. Nope. Uh, he shuts the door and you hear like a, a metal latch and a hissing sound uh, and he makes his way over to the table, takes a seat. Um, from the table he opens up a kind of glass slate um, that he begins typing away on. Something's almost like uh, little runic stones. He's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I got one's an this, um, Please, take a seat. being recorded? He looks at you, he's just like, for the purposes of these documentations, it does all need to be recorded. Uh, and I was going to state, you've beaten me to the punch, I'm afraid, miss. I was going to give you the full readout, but yes, I should get it out of the way now. This is being recorded uh, for the purposes of your immigration uh, and your documentation within within the city of, uh, within on, on the planet of Elysium and within the city of Ishtar. Uh, you are not under arrest at this point. Uh, this is simply to clarify your details of where you've come from, where you're going, and your business here on Ishtar, as well as to register any magic, weapons, or anything of, of dangerous properties that you've brought onto the planet with you. And he smiles. <laughs> right. uh, as you are off-worlders, I should also let you know that as a uh, planetar enforcer, uh, I am able to detect when you are lying. So, please don't. It would make right. it very okay. awkward and uncomfortable for both of us. Well, then we can get this off the table straight away. Our travel here was definitely not... Uh, well... Intentional? It wasn't um, intentional. Planned. Um, and we definitely didn't have any previous you know, acceptance to be allowed into this planet. So if there is a problem there, then hopefully we can avoid that. Well, mm, I will need some more specifics. We do have a process for those who are transported to the planet through accidental means. Um, accidental teleportation and, and planar transport is a possibility. We do have a format for that. What were the circumstances? Well, it's simple, really. Trying to stop uh, both our planet and entire existence from wiping out from the Crimson Tide. And stop. we started to do the such a thing by closing a rift, but unfortunately it's time. Uh, it exploded on us and caused us to shift here. So. Interesting. That is certainly, and he types a few things on his keyboard, that is most certainly a reasonable uh, reason for accidental planar transportation um, and a commendation, uh, nothing less. If you are, uh, I know that you are not lying, 
So sealing a rift of, of Hadars, that is admirable. I believe that there is currently a, a, an award payment for that. Um, well, I can I can resolve that for you once once this is completed. Our reward would be to go back home. That's all we accept. Well, the the credits you would be provided will help fund that, or partially. Um, there is an outstanding. What's the in this world? Uh, we deal. If you does Nova actually ask that, or is that an internal Nova question? Um, I'm going to say externally because she's just word vomiting okay. at this point because she's nervous. She's just word vomiting. Uh, we tend to we use Valkyrian credits currently, but some of the vendors also still accept uh, Elysian silver. But technically, it's not official. Right. Uh, there are there are, there are there are currency yeah. exchanges. If you have off-world currency, uh, you can convert it to Valkyrian credits um, at any of give the me, banks here in, in Ishtar. Give me a reason to say that's legal tender, please. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I just did. So, um, well, that explains how you got here. Uh, you obviously did not have a reason. Uh, you said. You were defending your planet, Master Ellen Asto. What planet are you all from? Well, it's uh, called Erois. He looks at you. His eyes glimmer with golden light. He looks very, very quickly. He glances around, types something on the computer, and you see like a spark of magic come out from his hand into this crystal tablet that he's currently on. The room goes dark and all the lights shut off. Um, and then a kind of like faint glow. He's like, oh dear, we seem to be having a technical issue. And then he leans in. He's like, whatever you do, do not repeat that word anywhere else. I've currently disabled the monitoring systems, but it will not last very long. We'll have technicians here in a few moments. How did you all leave Erois? Is what you said, I know what you said is true. You were fighting Hadar on your, you're from Erois? Yes, yes. fighting on two fronts. Yes. He looks around. This is a very dangerous city for you to be in. It's completely under Valkyrian control. Yeah, I'm not sure how much I help I can provide. There's not much help I can provide. I will do what I can. But this are, is going to be tricky. We are well documented by Valkyrians as criminals. Only because we're trying to do what's right by our planet. I know. I know you are. My planet was once part of a coalition. Ishtar was... You know, Ishtar City and the planet of Elysium was part of a coalition that fought against Kallus when he tried to invade. We even sent some of our Azimar to Erois, refugees. We, we told them to seek safety. I believe that they found your planet along with other creatures, tieflings. They found safety there and your Siaska took them in. We are very grateful for that. There are still a few of us here who believe in the old ways of things, but not many. I will be able to falsify some of your records, but I'm not sure how much long... It... If he sends agents here, they will uncover what I've done very quickly. If you have any questions, now is the time to ask me. We have minutes. Come with Where us. should we say we're uh... from? I can't. It's, it will be obvious if I leave here. I've... I've spent a lifetime working in this militia trying to provide a way to help people. If I abandon it now, lots of people will suffer. And that goes for most of the people here on Ishtar. I want to help you, I do. Way, uh, is there any way we can falsify the record? Say we're from, I don't know, Gideon Prime. I can, Say we're from... I, yes, I can, but you have to understand, my superiors have the same abilities that I do. They'll know when I'm lying, and uh, it's not against my nature to do so in the first place. I can falsify the immediate records, get you out of the precinct and into the city. I can even maybe get you those credits I mentioned for sealing the rift. That won't look too suspicious, but well, by tomorrow, people are going to know you're here. That's the best I can do. I'm sorry. What's the, What's quickest the fastest way, way out of here? Off of this planet. If you had money, if you had credits, I'd say the gateways. But you, you have to understand, there's no gateway back to Erois. Your planet is plan is sealed. We can't plane our travel there. No magic, no spell can get you there. Not one that we know, anyway. The quickest route, then? Probably by... Probably by starship. Um, normally, starships that get too close to Erois are attacked. Your your uh, sun, Palador, the sunship, it attacks anything that gets too close. 
if you could find a way to let it know that you're from Erois, it might let you pass. Um, Mark, given yes. Nova's knowledge of planar magic and the gateway that we saw under Callie's rest, mm-hmm. would she be able to maybe piece together like the coordinates for that, or um, you never, you th- never knew the, you never knew the coordinates yeah. for Erois. You saw Valor input something which went well, to Callus's flagship. Yeah. Um, you saw the priestess put in the code for the de- for the devil yeah, planet yeah. Uh, where Caridus was, but you don't know Erois's sequence. You don't know its uh, Stargate code, uh, the Chevron okay. sequence. Um, and Nova, whilst you are a student of planar magic, you're no expert. You're not like your professor. No, I'm a dabbler. Um, you are a dabbler. Um, that doesn't mean to say that you can't try and find out, but that would be tricky. Uh, yeah. Hadriel says, the other thing is if you know any other place you can go, a, a teleportation sequence, a sigil, another world where maybe you have more allies, that could be perhaps another route, but yeah, you're also to find a star captain. Into his flagship. Did you say that um, as Quill? Yeah. You're not lying. You have a code sequence for the Tassadar? His daughter gave it to us. His daughter? Did... Again, that's something perhaps a little beyond my pay grade, but can you give me the sequence? I have people I know that if I can give them that to them, if, if there was a coordinated attack, you'd have some allies. We want yeah. to use the code to get Vala back. You know, whatever business you have is your own, but I know people that to get the chance to infiltrate the Tassadar discreetly, subvertly, that's a once that's a once in a millennium opportunity. You, we would have to I know that you, get your word that you would not harm Vala. His daughter cannot uh, be harmed. Put it this way. She's she's I one of us. I won't give them I won't give them the code until you signify me that it's safe to attack. How about that? If you can get me about a... The uh, moment we do you know the here. sending spell? Uh, I do. Yes. There is a chance it can fail between planes, but use that. See if you can contact me, and then I can let them know. What if the moment we leave here, you he take us to them the directly? I can't take you, you myself, take but I them. can give you directions of how to find them. We could start this now. We could go with them. That's what you want, but that's a dangerous path. These are. This is a rebellion against the Empire, and the Empire is vast and dangerous. We're not ready for that yet. We're not. And you need to remember We're not something. Prepared. If you're from Erois, then I know that you fought against Valkyrian, but you need to understand that there are a lot of people in the universe. Lots of people from lots of planets who his empire has done nothing but bring them prosperity and peace and safety. He's not an enemy to everybody, just to the few of us who know a tyrant when we see one. He might not sacrifice lives, but he's not he's prepared to sacrifice almost everything else. The the code that Vala gave me, is it something I can send over sending instead? Or is no. it like a, it needs okay. it's pictographic it needs you need to physically that's why she had you in the dream where she could show you the sigils mm. um so that you would remember them no the nose okay. dream yeah you could try um we don't could have much Quill time use the eye to ask the question of what is Eros's thing boop, boop, boop. coordinates maybe. Style up code maybe yeah does it have one like it feels a bit... Yeah, on the Stargate that we saw under Callie's rest. The archways. That's true. Sorry, the archways. Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta remember, it's very important. Yeah, I can totally use the eye. Um, okay, in that case, I'll, I'll write down the You've code. got... If you want... I'll give you one more question to this guy, and you can see he's, like, looking around. You can begin to hear, like, footsteps and things like that. What's your favorite color? Not that. <laughs> 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 Sentry, got anything? Uh, I just, I, she just wants to leave. She just wants to GTFO ASAP. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, 
Think we're all okay, in that case, out. you hear uh, you hear the sounds of armored footsteps, and um, you see. Oh God, how to describe this fellow? Um, there is a lizard-like appearance, but Ooh. it's not a dragonborn. You see, like a lizardy man, but it's not a lizard man like you know a lizard man it's more like a gecko he's got like a rounded head with like these big bulbous eyes um a big pair of glass goggles that kind of completely surround the eyeballs um wearing uh, very loose uh, very tight fitting top with these kind of like overall trousers with like a tool belt um he's being uh, followed by two guards uh he kind of looks looks at the window looks at all of you looking in hadriel waves at him uh, he sticks in he's like ah officer hadriel your interrogation room has broken. I have come to fix. He's like, yes, yes, thank you, engineer. Yes, I, it, it, this panel, it just seemed to, I don't know, the magic seemed quite unstable. Uh, he's just like, ah, yes, sometimes problem. I, I fix, I fix. And he looks, he looks just like around all of you. Strange company. <laughs> he kind of cackles. Uh... And then he looks at the panel. He begins pulling out all these different crystal rods and tools. Uh, he begins fiddling around with it. Ah, yes. Ah, overburdened mana crystal. And he takes out this kind of large, slender crystal. And he's like, I replace. And then you hear this kind of hum. Uh, the magic seems to surge back through the room. There we go. Fixed. Yes. Have good day, all. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, One of his his you. tongue licks the licks like the big glass thing, and then he's like, ah, "Oh, that's cute. keep for keep forgetting that I am wearing them." <laughs> bye bye. And he Goodbye. begins trotting off. Uh, the two guards look at Hadriel. Hadriel uh, kind of glances back at them and is like, "It's fine. There's no problem. Just a technical issue." One of them is like. Uh, very well, Officer Hadriel. The other one lingers for a moment. It's got like a slightly feminine form. And in uh, do any does anybody speak infernal? I can't remember if any of you do. I don't um, think you do. I think no would be the only one who does. No, no, it's not. Because eyes of the keeper is only yeah, yeah. It's not. I yeah. got rid of eyes. So, so. you've got. Yeah. Did you do you not have the earring? Like, that's yeah. Uh, she does, it but is. it's not on there. It's only got certain yeah. languages. Because uh, we got the it's basic. It's only got common rattle. languages to erase. Yeah. Um, the woman says something in this kind of guttural, very husky voice, kind of. Uh, and he looks uh, he's just like no problem lieutenant just uh, some sort of technical issue you can tell the you can tell the captain that uh, I'm just processing these outlanders had a bit of a planar malfunction getting here ah. unfortunate I do hope you enjoy your stay on Elysium visitors she nods and then makes her way and it was fully helmeted you couldn't really see her face or what she looked like inside but she begins making her way uh hadriel turns back to you all it's like so uh where are we from uh, so you are all from uh and he begins typing he's like ah yes here we go landor uh traveling via landor uh malfunction with sealing hadar rift uh, i can award you a thousand credits um into an account but uh sometimes it, the transfer can be a bit messy I'll make sure I put it onto a chip for you. Um, and he pulls out a small kind of uh, ceramic disc uh, with various holes and lines drilled into it, slides it over towards uh, the five of you across the table. Um, and let's see, you're heading towards Gideon Prime uh, for oh, some sort of business. Yes, very good, very good. Uh, types that all away. It's like, well, uh, the last thing I have to do uh, is I just need to scan your weaponry and your magic. Uh, make sure that we flag you appropriately uh, for its use. Um, uh, he taps a button and there is a, a wash of light through the room um, and a magic aura surrounds any weapons or magic items you're carrying. Um, and you see like for Lucius, uh, like an aura of a certain, like a blue aura surrounds Lucius. For Nova, it's more of a purple black aura. Quill, it's like a white yellowish aura around you, the same aura as Sentry. Um, Ayla, it, there's no aura, but your lightning kind of unconsciously begins sparking up and down your arms. Uh, oh, that's a new one. Very interesting. 
Well, you are all flagged. Um, please do be aware that any unauthorized use of your uh, weapons or magic, um, unless in a case of self-defense, will be moderate, mod uh, monitored by the city security. Um, good day, citizens. I hope you enjoy the, your brief stay here on Elysium, unexpected though it was. Thank you, Hadrio. Uh, thank you, Hadrio. What Thank you. is self-defense, by the way? Just well, if you are attacked... Just, just questioning. Uh, of course, if you are attacked by anyone, you are more than welcome to defend yourselves. Though, killing is strictly prohibited. We ask you to subdue any assailants that you have. But this is extremely unlikely here on Elysium. We have not had any real street crime in centuries. Uh, everything is kept fairly safe. I do advise you to watch out. There are some undesirables who occasionally make attacks on the Empire's systems. Um, I would advise you to steer clear okay. of these attacks if they occur. Right. Uh, one last hey, thing. Thank you. Uh, could you point us in the direction of a starport or a teleportation or anything like that? Of course. Uh, let me give you a. Let me. Let me just provide you with. Oh, this is a little bit archaic, but it's a. Uh, it's a paper map, I'm afraid. And he pulls like a little drawer out of the table, and he has this a stack of these very worn, old-looking fold out maps uh that he kind of slides one over um he takes out uh, a small kind of uh, crystalline rod and when he places it against the paper it leaves like a, a marking of like a, a glowing blue line uh he circles the starport and he circles um a place called uh i don't know uh <laughs> Uh, he circles a place called Onoel Plaza. Uh, one of the major gateways is here on Onoel Plaza. Um, in terms of individuals that can provide teleportation services, I'm afraid that really you'll need to seek them out uh, on your own. Um, but the starport or the, the archway gate will be the best, best opportunity. Personally, I can't okay. stand uh, space travel. Uh, makes me quite queasy. Hmm. Well, we have no choice. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Once again, do not fear. Your safety here on Ishtar is guaranteed. We monitor the city heavily, so any trouble you get into, the militia will know about it. And he smiles. Great. Much obliged. Okay, thank you. Good day. Ah, uh, yes. Thank so, you. Uh, off we go. Off we go, everybody. Yeah. You are... Uh, yeah. He probably does lead you to the front of the precinct uh, and then lets you out onto a kind of boulevard that seems to stretch over several different streets and plazas and boulevards. It's all kind of a cross-cross criss -cross network here of, of uh, streets. There are no real, like, ground vehicles. Everything seems to either fly by magic or people just fly. People have wings or they just have magic and they just fly around and that's how they get places. Or people walk if they don't can't do that. Um, yeah. Stay calm. Uh, your magic calm. also reactivates as well. This is <sighs> fine. We're fine. Okay. Um, messenger ring. Stay calm, everyone. We are just residents in this city. <laughs> Let's just keep walking. Don't attract sus any suspicion or attention or anything. Like we always do. Have you seen our group? Do. Have I you know. seen us? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, you say that, but looking around, this is a city where there are all sorts of creatures. Like, the fact that, like, it, you know, in terms of your group, yes, you guys are not very good at saying subtle, but nobody's going to be like, is that, a, like, a walking robot woman? Or, like, wow, that's a bird man. No, like, there's way weirder stuff here. There's, like, people that are, like, tiny hamster people, and they are walking around in, like, a little pack of them and stuff. I'm staying like here. Uh, oh, my God, are they adorable? They are pretty adorable, yes. Uh, but they can't Kayla doesn't around. appreciate it, but Katie does. <laughs> there's no grungs here. You haven't Aww. seen a grung yet. There may be, maybe there's grungs, but they're not okay. immediately on this street. Okay. Let's go to the hmm. starport. Let's go check it out, see what we need to do, and then make a plan. We need to see how far a thousand credits gets us. Exactly. I wonder if... um. If, if, if a statue of a certain lord made of obsidian would sell well here. And Nova's looking really sketchy as she says it's just like looking around everywhere nervously. I mean... I wonder how much it... a sequester scroll goes for here. Yeah. <laughs> Me too, Mark! 
I'm also wondering, like, this is magical, like, delight and technological fantasy compared to, like, Aroas, right? There's, we can probably get, like, airship upgrades, right? Just <laughs> but, buy like, a spaceship. Super cheap. Buy They're a just spaceship. Like, oh, yeah, you need, you need yeah, an actual, like, some fucking elements of all that shit. I mean, this I, is this is yeah. like Eroes was like Final Fantasy tech level, where it's like airships and like weird Magitech stuff. Like Elysium is like the it, it's still fantasy. It's still got it's got sci-fi visuals, but it's like all powered by like crystals and magic and stuff like that. But it's yeah. this is like yeah, this is future tech stuff. Like you want to get like a magic jetpack, you can probably get one somewhere here. You wanna you wanna get like magic ray guns. Project you can project flock together is not needed. We can get him a jetpack. We're done. Oh, Everyone get a jetpack. Man. No need for an airship. We're done. No one saw that coming, did they? <laughs> Holy crap. And just as a point, because I've seen a few people in chat, right? If you're imagining Fifth Element, that's not what this is, right? This isn't as gritty and dark. Gideon Prime would probably be closer to, like, Fifth, Fifth Element, where it's like a magic New York. This place is, like, magic San Francisco. It's beautiful and green um there's these sloping curved buildings like it has that kind of more idyllic utopia vibe to like it than a gritty I'm space city in the final fantasy 8 yes or like balam garden right balam garden in mm. final fantasy 8 right. perfect nice. representation of what this this cool. aesthetically is like i'm imagining starfleet okay. prime which is also based in san fran so sure fucking star trek nerd. yeah star starfleet, <laughs> starfleet headquarters <laughs> That's what I'm imagining. Yeah. Um, I will. I will say, like, while everyone's talking, like, as soon as we step out of the building, Nova is just like, "Oh my stars!" Just like looking at everything, like, "Oh, can I, can I stay here?" Like, <laughs> you just kind of want to. I want to sketch everything. I just like. I want to ingest all this knowledge of all this technology. Carry on. <sighs> we we could try go to Honor World Plaza and see what's there. There's, there's, there's. Let's make a trip of it. We've only got what until tomorrow morning before messenger ring. People start to find well, depends out. How... Um... Depends how far away we uh... are. Like I don't know. Like who knows how long it will take us to get back, Quill. Like, I just, we, it could be, it could be, we, we could be weeks away. We could be months away. It... We could be in a different I don't time know. altogether. People, people, people. Or, Calm down. As or we can has, find as, a teleport, and it'll let, be exactly. Let, just let, 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 let Kim finish, Katie, just because she was on a on a roll there. You know, as Hadriel said, as I've said, these teleportation circles, these gateways, they'll get us there instantaneously. It it doesn't matter. It's fine. We'll be fine as long as we just we need to act fast. Maybe find out some more information about Jasper, but. I think our priority should be to find a gateway and see how much we need to go through to, to get back. Uh, we, the other thing is we need to figure out how to get near Arois. If, if we could just figure out the, the I can't, there is a, an archway there. It's, it's in Callie's Rest, but I didn't see the coordinates. I don't know I, if there's, or, or as he said, if we could get a spaceship to go near and get a message to Palador to not blast us out of space. What's that, Quill? What's that look in your eyes? I'm using the eye. I'm just gonna use it. <laughs> just ask. There you go. What's the, what's the I mean, code? The whole way Starbane was able to get on our planet in the very first place was we activated it from there that side. So we I'm need sure someone we... on that side to communicate to and to open it up for us. Do we not? Maybe we can communicate with the um. Oh, what's her name? The ASMR who got really angry when we screwed up and threw a tantrum Malika and stabbed Dawnblast. things. Her. Maybe, maybe we could send a message to her. It's... Look, we, we can't keep focusing on the massive problems. We have to focus on the small problems in front of us and solve those and solve the, the problems that come out of that. If we just stand here talking about the massive problems, we're just not going to get anywhere. One step at a time. Everybody's flying around, and the, the buildings are really scary, and I don't understand, and I'm overwhelmed, and I'm now going to go fetal. No, Lucius, no, please. No, no, no stand, stand up, stand up, you'll be fine. Just need a little right. moment. Keep walking. No, we'll keep, yeah, just move forward. It's just, so where are you guys, just, just go where to are you guys plaza. walking to? So you're going to go to the plaza? Yes, looking at our map. Plaza, that was, that was uh, what you suggested for... 
potential like teleportation things, right? He said that's where the archway, there is an archway there. Okay, on a wall plaza then. Okay. Just want to see what's there. You guys, it takes you... If you're walking there, it would take you a few hours. Um, there are, mm. The pathways here are... Um, there are points where you can basically get on them and like little magic platforms kind of zip you along them so you can cover great distances um, and then you walk the rest of the way. But it takes you about an hour to travel there. Uh, the Onoel Plaza is a enormous... Um, it's not really a shopping plaza. It's more like a... I'm trying to think of it, really. Um... You get the sense that this is a place where lots of businesses are, judging by the types of people coming and going. There's a lot of um, people bringing in uh, shipments of something in like metal containers and crates and things like that um, as they come come and go. Um, you can see that there is a high security presence here. There are uh, a large number of these um, Ishtar militia police forces that are wandering around. But there is a large building i guess almost like a shrine are you going to get the the essence of um it's uh, uh, almost cathedral like in its appearance but it's made from metal and glass um and uh, in front of it is a large statue of a man you all know very well uh callus starbane emperor valkyrian uh who stands in front of this large building um and part of it is open or well not open but it's made of glass you it appears open it's almost transparent um, until you get close enough and the rear section of this temple is built around a large curved archway made of metal and inscribed with segments very similar in construction to the one you found in cali's rest however this one looks far more advanced um, it has large mana crystals embedded into it, um, and you can see it's much larger than the one in Cali's Rest. This allows dozens of travelers to enter into it at a time, um, mm. but it is also heavily guarded. You can see at least sort of like 12 soldiers all in different patrols. Some of them have uh, carry weapons, the force rifles. Some of them have weapons that you don't recognize. These kind of very strange heavy backpacks connected to uh, long metal barrels um, affixed to their arms. Um, there are several of them appear to be the large creature that was uh, partnered with Hadriel. Some of them appear to be angels like Hadriel. Um, and they're all patrolling and kind of keeping watch on this gateway. There also appears to be a selection of staff who manage the... Um, the main kind of console that activates the gateway. Um, you see groups of travelers making their way up. They hand over substantial like chits or they pass magic crystals or they do something. A payment is exchanged. The staff enter the code and then the gateway opens and the travelers pass through into the other worlds. Um, and there is, a, there is a line. There is a quite a substantial line for this service. Um, Hmm. Is there anyone who looks like, I guess, like a, a an information or a ticket office or something like that? Where yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. There's like a yeah. small little office at the very front of the cathedral, um, and you get the sense that the archway is part of the temple. Uh, and people, as they go in, a lot of people are bowing their heads to the statue. People like offer up coins, or they are talking with. They're not really priests. They look like soldiers because they have armor on their top half and then they have these kind of more flowing robes on the bottom. Um, they all wear these slick black helmets with these glass black plates at the front, um, but they appear to be the custodians of the temple uh, and people are talking to them as they go past. But there is a small side building um, where people appear to be buying tickets and there seems to be some sort of helper for information. Um, a young woman... Um, who would appear, you've seen a woman like her before. This is an Eladrin. You met uh, one on Aegis V as Shansara. This woman, however, appears to have um, icy blue skin. Her hair is somewhat frosted white. Um, you can see that her clothing and her robes has delicate icicle patterns and, and snowflake patterns embroidered onto it. Um, and she appears to just be kind of like playing with her hair and looking very bored. What... Would Nova know in her studies and fascination with space, would she know of a planet that was near to Erois? No. Because you've never been outside of Erois. Erois has never studied anything beyond the planet. The yeah, pla so even studying planar to... magic is forbidden on yeah. Erois. You know some okay. people that have, know about it, but yeah, there, mm -hmm. there's no records of like other planets or anything like that. 
Okay. Heroes is very separated from the rest of the universe. Yeah. I have... Anybody else? I, I have an idea. Just, just, Kim, just let me let me go to everybody yeah. else. Just see if anybody else has got anything. Anything from anybody mm. else? Tom is making a face. Really? No, right. I, no, I, I think, uh, yeah, just follow, follow Nova and, right. and see what, what happens there. Carry on then, Kim. I wonder, the thing we need is we need coordinates or... Because I feel like if I were just to go up and be like, hey, could you just put in these coordinates? They'd be like, hmm, a rowist, mm, arrested. Um... I wonder if we could ask Vala for if she knows any coordinates of anything either closer to Arois or in Arois. I, I have dreams, so I can I can talk to her through that. Or um I I hmm. I I could just use the eye and just find if I ask the specific question and the answer, and I don't get an answer, then I can keep trying until I find one that will get us back to some place in Aroes. We know there's one in Cali's Rest. We know there's mm. one. There must be one in Gusthaven. There must be one. But I more mean that we oh. then need to ask these kind people who are under the control of, um, you know, that chap. And I point at the statue, um, and they might recognise it as Aroes. And Hadriel said Aroes is locked off. Um, so we have to try and come back here when it's quiet, when it's... We'd have to sneak, maybe, but I doubt they would ever have it unguarded. How many people can you make invisible? Uh, well, mm, uh, four. We answered this last time. Yeah. Four. If the, if the angel can tell when we're lying, someone on this planet is going to be able to tell where they're in, are invisible people. Look at it. The technology, they're surely going to be able to to see that kind of stuff. True. Um, they're way ahead of us here. This is ridiculous. This is absurd, but kind of cool, but absurd mostly. It depends. It depends if when entering the code, they immediately know where it goes. You know what I mean? It's not like we're mm. asking for a place. We are giving them a code. Hmm. If we find well, we, could code, ask the, we, we could ask the information lady over there if we could just give codes what the deal is. Let's try it. Yeah, we're just, we're just travelers asking how this works. Yes. That's all we mm -hmm. need to be. I'm just like, no, there was an issue with our interplanetary travel. We, we have that on our record, that it was a, an issue with traveling, and we're trying to go somewhere. He said that we could be traveling to Gideon Prime for business. How, we just need to know how we travel. How do we do it? Yeah. How much also, we're from Landor. We're from Landor. 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 Not a space door. No, Land Landor. Landor. Not an air door. Land door. Or an ocean Land door. <laughs> Land door? Okay. Land door. Take it. Go no way. Go. <laughs> go, go, go. Nova. I go, Nova. Me? You've got yourself oh. most together. Go. Okay. Okay, I, I'll go up to um, the Aladrin. She looks at you through tired, uh, lazy eyes as she kind of looks at you. Hello. Can I help you? Hi. Um, we would like to travel somewhere. Um, yes. And I'm not entirely sure how this works. Um, if we give you some coordinates, could you just teleport us there? Please and thank you. Well, you can... Yes, we can input the coordinates into the console and then you could go, but we have the coordinates for every known location within the, within the Empire, yes. But you would... Yeah, we have every location on record. Okay, um, how much does it cost for a party of one, two, three, four, five, please, and thank you? For five people, I like, looks at it, like, 10,000 credits. 10,000 credits, wonderful. <laughs> um, hmm, um, hmm, hmm, okay, uh, thank you, goodbye. Whatever. She just kind of watches <laughs> you go. 
Oh dear. Okay, uh, two problems. Uh, and yeah. teleportation, uh, not tele, sorry, uh, fun ring. Messenger ring. Um, two problems. Uh, mm. Number one, it's locations within the empire. Uh, not quite sure if Erois is quite registered as empire yet. I mean, I know he's kind of... Mm. Um, qu- problem number two, does it's anyone a work in progress, have, that one. is fine. Yeah. Does anyone have 9,000 credits on them? Oh. Uh-huh. Oh, let's just close nine more... Oh, I left them on the last oh, planet we got abandoned yeah, I on. Know. Yeah, I know. I know that's a tricky one. Yeah, no one packed a wallet. Um, it's okay. Everyone, hold yourselves together. Come on. It's that's that strong <laughs> well, here. <laughs> so, if, if a teleportation is ten thousand, mm-hmm. we can't convert any of our money. Why would we be able to? Unless there's a collector. Yes, we just need to find someone that's willing to be our friend, or offer us a discount, or be in with our cause. Hadriel said there were others like him. Still, don't like the. That's going to be very difficult to find without unintentionally looking like we're trying to find that. Not if we go. How do we go about? Find... Go back to find an off-world collector. Someone who collects weird and crazy artifacts from all across the <laughs> space, and we give him, "Wow, look at this obsidian starbane we found! Ten thousand credits, please! Wow, look at this money from a distant planet that you've never heard of!" And we give him that. That's about to be the hottest planet money. in the empire. It's true. Yeah, I'm sure people. We just trade our money to a collector. That's so about to be the hottest could. planet that your leader is sacrificing to Hadar. <laughs> oh, no, don't remind me. It's a memory. <laughs> hey, Suvenir. Go. This is this is Souvenir like, from the apocalypse. This is like Rosie trading Zoom. black market material potentially. If there's someone that's very much siding with the law, and we start producing erosion goods, they'll be like, "Where the hell did you get this from? I'm calling the police. Yeah. You're going to jail." So we need to make sure we pick the right people to approach on well, this. Well, now the question is, do do people, or is it just officers, is it just military, do they know about Aroist, or does everybody know about Aroist? I look blankly back at Quill. <sighs> <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, what we have might be worth nothing if, if Aroist doesn't mean anything to anybody. However, that Starbane statue, if there's any place to sell it, it's now. <laughs> True. <laughs> Why not? That is, we... that is one thing that I do agree on. Yeah. If there was ever a place, yeah. <laughs> like, here is that place. <laughs> <laughs> Praxis Fall. Anyway. Um... We need Praxis to... Praxis Fall, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Fourth century. Oh. <laughs> Praxis file for now. A means to an end. And I don't mean the Hadar end, I mean the good end. Yes, etc. Mm. Very hard to keep positive, isn't it? I'm struggling. Mm. Uh, uh, my knees are buckling, Lucius, I'll be honest. It's, um, uh, I'll, hold, uh, and I'll, I'll hold her knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my knees. Stand I'm going strong. to fall down. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> we need to... We need to gather our thoughts. We need to mm. pick our next destination very carefully and also not be picked up by the ultra uh, law that is watching everything that we do. We need to understand this place. So the way I see it, we either try and gather money to get through the, the, the archway, the gateway, or we find a captain, a spaceship, that that was, you know, Hadriel, Hadriel also said that that was an option, was we could find, you know, some kind of a captain that, or a spaceship to travel, cargo, something like that, or we could try and reach out to this underground revolution, but I don't really, I mean, Hadriel didn't really give us any pointers on that one. Um, or a hop maybe if jump we, to Maybe if we can travel by starship, is there any way that we can... Is, is there any way we can contact Halidor through Hesper? Hesper? Possibly, but remember... Like, we, they, we passed remember, when Ayla, we went... Halidor does know 
us. He's seen us before, and he recognizes us. That's what I mean. Because I remember seeing his little face. So if we can get him to be like, "Eh, eh, eh," maybe he would let (laughs) us in, right? I don't think I'm that memorable, though. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm sure he's seen a million wild elves. But at the same Um, time, we'd be entering into a world with a a starship. I do have a completely mad idea. Go on. I want to hear we it. Could, it. We could go to Jasavir. Jasavir is a city that used to be on Aroas, and the High Elves there experimented with planar magic and teleported Jasavir somewhere into space and swapped it with what is the Ganassi homeworld, Vortensar, uh, sorry, uh, city. And so that's where Vortensar is on Aroas today. Hadriel said Jasavir is still here. It, it, it exists. So maybe we could go there and hope that there are some ancestors who remember Vortensar. He did and would also help. say that doing that would involve traveling via Gideon Prime to get to Jasavir. Unless there Which... are coordinates for Jasavir. Could be. It's an outside idea. It's a massively outside idea. I know it's it's banking on a lot of things. I, you know, obviously I I've only just confirmed ten minutes ago that Jasavir still exists. So I don't know what their allegiances would be, if they would even remember the Ganassi or Aroas. Like, but I feel like they would maybe still have some allegiance to Aroas. I don't know. That's a big. It's a big bank. It's a big. Well, regardless, it's, out there. it's good to have multiple options to go down. So it is. That's Very true. that's nice. And, we'll and that's why I want all of you to think about which of those options you would like to pursue and tell me which uh-huh. one you would like to pursue. Ready for next week, because oh. we're going to end things here today. We've yeah. got a stream after us, and we've got donations and stuff no, to read. Don't. And honestly, I'm not prepared, so I need a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But what Man. we do have after this is a brand new fan art video. So look oh, forward to that. Woo! Stay around holy for after the holy. donations. And, and celebrate cool. all the awesome fan art that's come in. Uh, it's a cool. big one. Fan well, video. let's get those donos done because uh, I want to make sure that we finish up with enough time for the fan art video and then to go to the hosted streamer. Um, there is no hosted streamer. XP? There is not uh, a hosted streamer. There isn't a hosted streamer. <laughs> there is, yeah. apparently, I think. Somebody no. said that there is. Oh, okay. Now. Oh, is there? Yeah, Nightjar says in chat there's a hosted stream after this, yeah, so. Okay. Oh, okay. Not, Nigel, you said that we did. Oh, I was okay. told by no, Harry no. himself. So there was but not. It's not. I didn't know if like somebody had taken the slot or something last minute. Maybe. Um, <laughs> but Nigel's no, but, um, confused me. All right. Well. Let's anyway. read donors. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, do you want to start with high uh, rolls? I'll do. I'll get the XP stuff started. Yeah, I'll do. I'll do high rollers. Microtone 2K with a quarter hundo. Uh, wow. Much love from USA, Tennessee. Sorry, can't catch your stream taking down an avatar of Shah. You guys have been huh? a huge inspiration for me to overcome my social anxiety, and now I've joined two campaigns of my own and making a character for a third. Congratulations. Oh, well, thank you very much. Magma Jaw the thank Undying. You. Greetings, High Rollers. Hey. I come to you from the realms of chaos. Just wanted to give you folks some money and support of all the awesome content you're doing. I'm loving the story of Arois, Mark, and can't wait to see how things go at the Stormwall. GG. Well, Stormwall, huh? <laughs> Ooh, I think we're we'll a little bit longer. Well, every time we make a plan, it goes to shit. Yeah. I'm never um, going to get that shot of Tiangong. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'm never this, going this to get was... any hammery things. Well, your your plan, you, Ayla, if you want to buy hammery things, this is a fucking great place to I do it. <laughs> like, um, get like magic shit from the magic place. It's one of those things, right, where you guys were two successes away from, from sealing that portal and it came down to dice rolls. Like, Trot just rolled garbage. Like, he had like a plus crazy high and it just, the dice betrayed. Like, that's, you know, it's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, Thanks for 20. <laughs> <laughs> um, Delena Dan. Oh, Bard Squad today. Have an awesome episode tonight. Hope you all of you are healthy and well. Stay sane out there. Lots of loves. Thank you, Delena Dan. Ravager. My gods, this is the most nerve wracking skill challenge I've ever witnessed. Unfortunately, I won't be able to watch all of today because I'll be running Death House for my players shortly. Wish nice. me luck. Ooh. I was about to say good luck, but good luck now. By the way, Mark, what do you yep. use for a voice changer? 
Uh, it's called Voice Mod Pro. Is the name of the software. He doesn't use voice. Wonderful. He just pretends. No, it's all my natural voice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very impressive. But it's, I can do ventriloquism. Right? Yeah. You see me move once. Yeah. <laughs> um, Zior or Zior. Hey all, loving the Eroes campaign. Mark, you've gotten me into DMing and I want to start building my own world. I'm following the Dungeon Master's Guide, but I wanted to ask you for other resources and specifically about creating good villains. Thanks. YouTube. There's loads of good videos on that stuff now. Um, otherwise, DMG. Always my go-tos. Matt Colville, he does really good stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and in terms of good, good villains, make them, make them weirdly sexy. Mm. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that helps. Leather uh, space armor. Jesse with a quarter hundo. Finally, after three weeks of non stop binge watching the Euros campaign, I'm finally getting to watch live. This campaign has made being a FedEx driver during these times uh, not as stressful and faster days. Thank you oh, for all y'all do. P.S. Curse of Strahd is badass. It is. Agreed. Oh, thank you, uh, man. Salo, Kaelo, Sayelo, uh, Quarter Hundo. You guys have brought me a lot of good time since the start of Lightfall to the point where I haven't missed an episode. Also, you've helped me through these last uh, six weeks of isolation as I'm at risk and haven't left the house since before the lockdown. Well, but... hopefully we can get through it soon. <laughs> um, but thank you very much. Ah. Only if people <gasps> stay at home. Stay home. <laughs> Varus with a... Very, very lovely donation, but no message. Thank you very much. And Darth Day 41, at least nobody died. That counts for something, right? <laughs> it does. I think we actually uh, came out of this pretty good. Of course Wait, you I've just done a fucking refresh. space nerd. Uh, I disagree. On. Strongly. Sentry, Sentry disagrees. <laughs> Sentry's I was very like, much oh, looking forward Rhiannon, to going to Rhiannon the agrees. Wall of Sentry disagrees. Sorry, I've refreshed. Well, There's a load more. Um... <laughs> Ren Harrell, oh. Mark, what the actual hell? What the actual fucking hell? That Norwegian guy. <laughs> I agree. Uh, still trying to figure out donations. Three different donations trying to figure them out. I think I've got. I think I've read all of your donations to figure them out. Um, there we go. Max Luther with a half hundo. Enjoying the series. <laughs> Please keep up the great work. Uh, thank you very much, Ren Harrell. Thank you, Kim. It was Doctor Who. I'm not sure mm. what's in relation to. Um, uh, Prisoner Kenku Zero. Noises. Prisoner Zero. Oh, Kenku Noises with just over a quarter hundo. Plop, plop, plop. Um, okay. <laughs> Nick Gill. So, next week, new intro. Like in an anime, we need a new opening when starting season two. High rollers in space. No don't, more done done. Don't no. excite me with the idea of that sort of shit because I will go over the top with it. Yep. Yep. We do have an idea we'll for another it. one, but we just haven't made it fully yet. Trot's done a lot of it. But and then a pandemic really happened. Other bit. <laughs> yeah. And then a pandemic yeah. happened. Right. That Is that anything, anything else? I've way got... more. I appreciate you with a quarter hundo. I had to wait to my birthday, but honestly, just read the username. I appreciate Aww. you. Right. Thank you very much. Wagadodo. Half hundo. Another way, uh, another way out there stream, giving me some great entertainment while working. Frankly, NBC, at this point, just let Eroes die and become space pirates. Who cares about that one planet when you have the whole universe? Ren Harrell, I'm true, sorry for the donation, but I'm late to a session. I fucking love how this campaign started with, hey, we're doing another fantasy adventure. And we've reached a point where it can be summed up with, hey, our DM plays Mass Effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, he does. <laughs> fucking, he loves Mass Effect, in fact. He fucking loves it. Um, the Citadel, yeah. <laughs> wow. Argent. Yumarando <laughs> or Yumarando, quarter hundo. <laughs> Hi crew, watching since you guys started Dead Reckoning and really enjoyed every single stream. Looking forward to playing a monk myself since Juto. Keep it going and keep making people happy like myself. Thank you very much. The Norwegian guy, that Norwegian guy, uh, trying to figure out. Sorry, I've read all of your donations. Zen Blaster with 33.33 recurring, of course. Hi rollers, the travel clerk in Balam Garden Planet saying, whatever. Was that female squall? <laughs> Everyone stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> As in the it was just a winter Aladrin. They were always miserable. D Miller, eighteen forty one, another half hundo. Hope this finds you all in good Holy health. Moly. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you very much. And that Norwegian guy, another donation, trying to debug it. I think I've read every single one of yours. Thank you for all of those. <sighs> go, right, that's all. Go, just go quick. Lightning wing dragon donated an egg of magic surround sentry. Did we find the one good egg on this planet? Let's get a crack on it. 
Excellent puns, guys. Metamanu donated. I don't know what to say. Damn, another unexpected turn of events. Noise. New Alex donated. Definitely getting some buddy up vibes from the two officers on the chariot. You know the style? Coming soon to High Rollers TV. He was the by the book planetar with rebel sympathies. Uh, his partner is a demon devoted to Starbane. <laughs> Ace of Thorns donated. Here oh, two and brothers. oops. There and oops. Everywhere and oh shit. And our horses are doing a Voyager. Set course for home. Hugs. Thank you. Line Wind Dragon again. Quill Eye. Mm. What is the safest, securest, but also the fastest way to get from where we are to Eros without alerting attention to Starbane, his forces, or his allies, Hadar, or anyone else who seeks to do us harm, circumventing Mark's GM evilness? Thanks. Bye. Too uh, complicated. Like question. Two yeah, more too from Lightning Wing Dragon to end. Uh, Lightning Wing Dragon, full caps. What is with this gang completely throwing the GM off the rails via teleportation? Pretty sure that was, not his. <laughs> that was That was on me. Yeah, that was the hundred percent on me. I put a, I put yeah. a one chance. I put a one like a tiny percent chance that this could happen because I thought it'd be don't cool. Don't do it. And it's it not on every time. Roll it. Absolutely, I'm gonna do it. It's awesome. Only Rihanna would roll that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lightning that's Dragon. it. Like, as a yeah. one. <laughs> Queen of the Nat ones. Finally, anyone remember Barris from Light Four? Love you guys as always. Thank you, Lightning Wing Dragon, for all those donations. And that's always. everybody from Yogs. Barris boys. Right, thank you. Right, XP. Let's do it quick. Um, no magic oh. item. Nobody bonded to a new magic item. Did anybody invoke their bond ideal or I'm flaw no, in a meaningful fine. way? No. <sighs> Fetal no. position. Nope. New new relationship. Uh, character develops a new or existing relationship in a new, in a meaningful way. NPC or PC. Hadriel. 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 Kind of yep. saved Give it us. To you. Did us a solid. A character discovered a piece of interesting, useful, and or secret lore about the world. Do we feel that <laughs> nah. we got that one? I think we did. Uh, no, nah, uh, I didn't get that no. one at all, I don't think. This one, nah. this one you guys are going to probably say you do deserve it, but I'm gonna, I don't think you do just yet. The party... Oh, uh, uh, no, this is a different one. Character used a skill or a spell to solve a problem in an interesting, an interesting or meaningful way. I'll definitely give you guys that one, because I think that um, you guys did with the skill challenge. I think there were some cool ideas from like Ayla and Nova on that one and lucius as well doing some cool fun stuff um this Not is the one here. i think like perilous <laughs> journey you guys haven't technically done a perilous journey yet you've been sent somewhere but it didn't take it much time and it wasn't Not perilous, perilous yet. yet well i mean yet, it could have gone. the journey home i think depending on how you do it could be a perilous journey home because it will take uh, some xp coming up if we don't die uh failed roll yes trot definitely <laughs> failed a very Can important we, roll like Times that one Quite by ten a... today. No, no. Uh, I am going to give you some bonus experience points though for uh, solving the rift. I'm going to give you it as if it was a short-term goal, which it technically was that you sealed the rift. So I'm going to give you uh, bonus XP for that. Um, major. A, a character took actions that made a major impact in the world or local area for better or worse. Well, we sealed the yes. rift. We sealed the rift. I will say oh, yes. I, you I can I have gave, that. I also gave the uh, code to Hadriel. You didn't. You didn't give the code. I did. I did. I wrote you it didn't. down during the final question. You didn't. You did not. I, did. I said I'd write it down. You said you you did not say at any point. I like. When did you say that? I if the others say that it you was, said that, fair enough. I don't remember you saying that. It was during the final question when we were arming and arming. I might have I might have gone over someone else as they were speaking. But I said I I write down the thing to give him because he asked for it. All right. Chat says you did. So I, okay. Yeah. Uh, he at least wrote it down. Pretty sure he did. Okay. Fine. I did not hear you say that, but fine. He's uh, wheeled across this room in celebration. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't write it down because that would have been a very important thing if I had noticed that you had done that. I would have been like, okay, right, I'll make a note of that. Um, but I didn't hear you. All right, in that case, uh, that is 25, 25, 25, 20, that's 200, 225 on top. Uh, so Call that brings you to a total 000. of... 2,950 experience points yeah. each, <laughs> which I believe is level 10, which is 10. a very suitable level to be for planar adventuring. 2,950. Oh, yeah. What was that XP? 2,950. 2,950. Fuck. Level oh 10. Oh my god. Ooh. Here we go, boys. Level 10 by quite a long way as well. See, this is where chat, this is where chat does screw you a little bit, Tom. Chat agrees that you said that you would write it down, but says, but he never said he gave it to him. <laughs> I mean, you'll have to tell that soon. Now and next week. Yeah, no, I'm not. If you said you wrote it down, then it's he's got it. 
Um, <laughs> cool. It was just funny. Right. Cool. Well, that is it from us this week. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I would have loved to have continued going on a bit later, but I don't have anything prepared now. So well, yeah. I thought like, well, if it happens, I'll improv it and then we'll work from then. So, that and I did. Uh, the Mark, that was a very that was nice episode 69. Nice. I enjoyed it. Nice. 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 I like nice it when so big well. important stuff happens. Um, Coming up next, I mean, fan art video. And then if you could also uh, recommend to us who you'd like us to host from the Yogscast stream team after yeah, that, there you go. I will do that. Um, there's there no one specific, one but we'll pass on the viewers to whoever you think is best. Yes. So, Good yeah. lad. Enjoy the fan art video and say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, everybody. Oh goodbye. Oh goodbye. Oh goodbye. Oh goodbye. See you on Thursday Oi. for Strahd. Oh, yeah, bye. Thursday. Thank you.